Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your Ring of Honor New Japan Global Wars 2015 live reactions. Ashton, I know how much you and I have been looking forward to this show. Uh, this looks like it's going to be absolutely amazing, guys. I cannot wait to do it. My cohort and commentary here, night one looks to be absolutely insane. Yeah, there is one match on this show that made this show worth paying for, and that's ACH versus Shinsuke Nakamura. That match could be a match of the year contender. I don't have an ROH-based matchup on my list yet. I only have three matchups on the list that I've been constructing, but I'm going to keep a close eye on that match tonight because we may be looking at a contender there. Let me see if I can guess what your three matches are. Yeah. Nakamura Ibushi from Wrestle Kingdom 9. That's correct. Lesnar, Rollins, and Cena at Royal Rumble. That's correct. And tell me what show the third match is on. Uh, Lucha Underground. Oh. Um, Grave Consequences? Yeah, that's correct. Nice. So this could be the fourth match to make my list. And I'll tell you what, keeping a list, I can tell you that the final selection is, is going to be all the harder to make. But, I mean, Global Wars just seems like it's going to be a packed show. And here we are, we're going to the ring now. I, I mean, actually, just so many great matches. But, yes, that, to me, is the true main event. Those two are going to tear the house down. Yeah, for sure. Um, from what I understand, there's going to be a show or two before 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, or not a show or two, a match or two before 8 o'clock tonight. But I'm not completely sure. So, we started the recorder just in case. It's about... A uh, quarter of 20 of eight, somewhere around there. And we will we will see what kind of matches we get. If we get matches now, uh, we're going to keep the recorder on. Otherwise, we're going to just turn the recorder off and turn the recorder back on when something actually happens. Absolutely. Here we see King Carino, as I guess he's referring to himself now. I don't know how that development came about. And Kevin Kelly at ringside. I'll tell you how that development came about. Truth. Yeah. Ashton loves Steve Carino, guys. Is he because, still your favorite commentator going in wrestling right now, would you say? Yes, for sure. That's awesome. Honestly, it comes down to him and Corey Graves. Yeah, they're both so... Here we go! Silas Young! Silas Young, the last real man in professional wrestling. Oh, who's his teammate there? It's a Japanese guy. Is that Tenzan? I'm, I'm not sure who that is. I'm hoping I think that might like... be uh, Hiroshi Tenzan. Uh, oh, Watanabe. Watanabe, okay. I should have known that he didn't have the the goofy tins on hair. <laughs> it's uh you know it's it's good to see Silas Young. I really liked him when he was uh, feuding with uh, with, with Steen. Steen. Yeah. 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 It's good to see him, but it's also good to see him teaming up with a Japanese guy. We've got some interpromotional tag team matches going on now. Yeah, this should be in a fun opener for sure. I'm wondering who their opposition is. Do you remember what match is supposed to be on the card, Ashton? I dude, I don't even have the card pulled up right now. I just want to be surprised by it. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. I mean, Silas Young looking pissed off as always. I just think that's kind of his, his resting bitch face. I was looking that pissed off. Uh, I don't I even mean, think it's resting. I think that's just he's making that face. Yeah. I, I don't think I could ever see Silas Young in a good mood. I mean, unless, of course, it comes at the misery of someone else. I but. just imagine Silas Young as this hard ass son of a gun. But then he goes home to his kids and he's father of the year. Yeah, right. <laughs> and here we see Moose. 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 Is that Ghetto? I think that's Ghetto. Let's see. Let's get a name graphic going here as we see Veda Scott. Moose and Ghetto. <laughs> ghetto, I love that he's just kind of distancing himself from these guys. Like, these guys are these guys are crazy. And, yeah, it is Ghetto, by the way, confirmed. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, Veda Scott and Stokely Hathaway, of course. Um, Veda Scott uh, hitching herself onto the Moose bandwagon. Moose is a freak, man. Absolutely. Undefeated, if I'm not mistaken. Hasn't yet suffered a loss. Yeah. Or, and it really, by undefeated, I should qualify by saying he hasn't been pinned or submitted. Um, Dude, look at how freaking athletic he is. You know, if he would have been, if he would have been that athletic eight years ago, he wouldn't have even been an offensive lineman. He would have been an all pro defensive end. <laughs> I mean, I got to say, dude, to me, as a guy who usually cringes when you see athletes of certain other you know, uh, sp sports or mediums, try and transition into pro wrestling. 
Moose has got to be one of the most surprising prospects I've seen because he actually adapted. Well, you know, that's the thing is that Moose, to me, did it the right way. Right. Because a lot of the time they'll transition and they'll just immediately like, oh, I got, hey, hey, WWE, I'm a former football player. You should let me come and train at NXT now. No, Moose is like, no, man, I'm going to go to the indies. I'm going to pay my dues. I am going to earn my way up. And if WWE comes calling, let them. But until they do, I'm going to freaking destroy everyone on the indies. And you know what? For that, Moose has my utmost respect. He really does. Because I, I think so many of these guys, I think, have a sense of entitlement. Like, oh, I did this, so naturally you should want me to do this. Put me on that main stage now. Well, yeah, I mean, the two guys that immediately come to mind, Mojo Rawley and Baron Corbin. Two former NFL offensive linemen. Actually, I think Baron Corbin was an offensive lineman. I'm pretty sure Mojo Rawley was a defensive end. But the two former NFL guys that basically went straight to the WWE's developmental system. You know, actually, we got a very interesting dynamic in this tag match, at least as far as Moose and Silas Young are concerned, because I'm not, I can't speak for uh, for Ghetto or uh, Watanabe. But but Moose, I mean, I mean, we see the whole dynamic with him. Veda Scott, you know, I think is kind of his heelish aspect even though he does want to show respect and be part of the locker room and silas young just hates everybody so yeah. I, I don't remember him undergoing a personality change last i checked so it's going to be uh, an interesting dynamic seeing two you know heelish people more or less well honestly this yeah. feels like heel versus heel all around because ghetto is a heel in new japan right and watanabe is is playing heel in this match so it really does just feel like everybody in this match just hates everybody and look at the quick jabs there from Ghetto. That was that was insane. There's a nice kick. Oh, that was nice Watanabe. little yeah swing, roundhouse swing. Oh, beautiful there. And Ghetto's fired up. Freaking haymaker, man. Absolutely. Silas Young is just angry that his partner isn't winning. Yeah, I'm, t- I'm telling you, Silas Young is perpetually angry. I'm telling you. I mean, is he white? him and Mark Henry? Man, could really hit it off. I was I was just saying, is he white Mark Henry? <laughs> he might as well be with more hair on his chest. Oh, there, let's right? go. Moose is coming in to face uh, Silas. This is going to be a clash right here. Oh, man. I don't even think it's going to be a clash. I think this is going to be a squash. I'll tell you what. I'd, I'd like to see Silas oh, tell look at him. Silas using that vet- veteran instinct to catch Moose off guard with the kick to the gut. Well, here, I mean, here's the thing, Andrew. We're talking about Moose, you know, trying to adapt and, and learning the business. I mean, Silas Young isn't going to be stupid enough to try and get in a power matchup with Moose. He knows that's a battle he can't win. Yep. I mean, uh, you, you don't want to take your eye off Silas Young. He's a wily, wily veteran, very cunning. And man, look at that right there, breaking the eyes just like that. You know what? I'm, you know what match I want to see, John? What's that? I want to see Moose versus Tomohiro Ishii. That would be a pretty uh, beast matchup. Definitely very hard hitting, to be sure. Or even Moose versus Togi Makabe. And look at Silas Young with that modified, you know, back rake off the rope. Man. He hates Moose. Oh, that drop kick! Oh, the, the, the beautiful vertical leap there. That I would drop love kick. to know what his vertical leap is right now. Like standing vertical leap, like what they do at the NFL Combine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I oh, can't. I love Ghetto. He's so good. He's selling Moose's tag as painful. <laughs> I Moose, love it. Moose is a freak. Nice kick to the gut there by Ghetto off the ropes. Silas oh, Young catches him, and what a backbreaker there! And look at how he keeps the keeps the hold and gets the lariat. Beautiful. Yeah, that was freaking genius. Uh, you I know, I gotta really say, like these guys, I'm really happy Silas Young is on this card because I, I have to say, of all the ROH people that we've seen and all the shows that you and I have watched together since we've started more actively paying attention to the promotion, Silas Young is probably the one guy I've wanted to see more of. He kind of, he really does strike me as kind of like that throwback. I'd like to see a guy like him versus Ric Flair in his prime. I mean, that'd be a really heelish matchup if I've ever seen one. Yeah, or or even just him versus a guy like Hogan. Yeah, definitely. I mean, since that would make more sense from a babyface heel perspective. And you see now Watanabe keeping a Ghetto grounded. I think he knows from his earlier exchange, Ghetto having a vertical base is dangerous. I feel like Silas Young is the perfect gimmick for the indies, though. Because, like, if you list all the names that would make the most sense... Oh, curb stomp! Oh my god, oh, and there, yeah, brutal. And if you would, anyway, if you would make a list of all the guys that it makes the most sense for Silas Young to face, they're all former indie guys. Like, if you look at WWE, Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose, basically, Silas Young is the indie version of Sheamus right now. Yeah, you know, it's. Um, I'm so glad you said that, because that's kind of where my mind was going when you were listing those names off. I'm like, he's probably going to say 
that he's like Seamus like, and that's absolutely true. I mean, anybody that has the audacity to say that he's the last real man and everybody else is just, you know, a, a boy or whatever, you know, children running the household, which the last person to say that was Bull Dempsey, ask him how that worked out for him. Yeah. Uh, but Silas Young ain't no Bull Dempsey. We've got <laughs> some pretty personal. consistent quick tags going on here between Watanabe and uh, Silas Young. Well, it's intelligent, as you know, kind of the tag team aficionado of the group because you know i'm a sucker for all that crap i mean yeah, you know sure. they're cutting they're, you know they're cutting the ring in half they're keeping ghetto from moose because moose yeah. is the fresher guy it's Watanabe just made a mistake though uh, but yeah and see that oh that's all it oh takes. but silas young is a genius and that's the veteran instinct right there and you see veda scott about to lose it but about to how about she is yeah definitely she's lost it silas young is gonna get counted out though he's in there for a little too long yeah, well, Although, for what it's worth, I think ROH is a little more liberal with that rule. Yeah, I mean, NXT refs for the loss. Yeah. No, no, get over the second time. Get it, going get for tag. Moose, man. He wants that tag. What an get a, No. Oh, the, Moose throttle him by the throat, and he throw him, and there's the tag. Moose cock block the cock block. Oh, look at that nice shoulder block. Oh, actually, no, it wasn't a shoulder block. He's using his head. Oh, I think people man. like Moose. Moose is definitely getting over. Oh, now going from one corner to the next, alternating how he's imposing his will. Now he sandwiches the opposition, and what a big splash by Moose. He's getting there. He's getting there, man. Double. Oh, oh my Moose God. Saw... Oh, wow. Cross body. That was amazing. Moose that gets... athleticism, though. Holy crap. Moose gets better and better every time I see him, and that's the biggest compliment I can pay a man in his position. And I know want... he's stalking Watanabe. I want a new ROH tag team, Moose and Donovan Dijak, the two freakiest big man athletes in the Indies today. And look at Ghetto giving his partner coverage there when he was caught in that waist lock with Moose, but there's a steamroller there by Savage Young. So, the oh, what is he doing? Oh, wow. Oh, nice. he missed it. What do you even call that? Uh, uh, Obviously, uh, it wasn't a split-legged moonsault since it wasn't. I'm, I'm calling it a headstand moonsault. Okay, that works. But, uh... You see Moose breaking out of the uh, the, the, the go behind. Oh, Watanabe. nice! Look at Watanabe. Oh, but Moose, oh. Look at that. Oh, oh, Moose got caught. German. Beautiful German by Watanabe, but Moose, look at the recovery. Already on his one face. knee. His left arm is crooked. Left I do not advise this about Watanabe at all. I think he's wasting way too much time here. Showboating. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and he got the. Not the Coles line, but Moose is staggering. See, that right there, though, that's why I want to see him versus Ishii or Makabe. Or Makabe. That strong style match, though. Yeah. And I'll watch Nabe. Again, the showboating's going to cost him, and there it is! And he slams him down. Oh, oh what a lariat! Took his head off. That could be it right there, and no, it's not. Watanabe kicks out. Wow. We know that Moose likes to call up on the spear, but I didn't even think he was going to need it after that lariat. Good lord. I love the rolling spear that he does. Oh, and he may be going for it here. Oh, oh no, but, but Watanabe had it scouted. I think Silas Young's about to get speared. Oh, man. Only yeah, one he's talking too much to Watanabe right now. He's about to get speared. Yeah, and he's holding that one arm. This is not a good place for Silas Young to be. There's the spear. Absolutely. It's academic. Count to Quick 100 work. and it's yeah, over. Yeah, definitely. It's over. Wow. And Beta Scott with this smile on her face. That was awesome. You know you know what that smile tells me, I think, and I think Veda's known for a while. She may be having a future world ROH world champion in her camp. He is so big. He looks so much bigger than 6'5". Oh, my God. He looks like a solid 6'8". <laughs> He's so big in ROH. <laughs> he just high five. He did a, a double low five to Ghetto, and Ghetto like shook his hands like it hurt. <laughs> He's so That's good. Hilarious. Ghetto is such a pro, man. And here we take a look at some highlights. I mean, again, Moose gets better and better every time I see him. His athleticism is insanity. And oh, I don't. Think oh so. boy, what's Watanabe gonna do here with Silas Young? Is Silas so. gonna attack him? Probably. Silas lost, man. He's the one that got pinned. Yeah. Oh, no. Smart it was a Watanabe, though, to tag in a guy with only one good arm. There and it there is. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never known a man to be pretty okay with a loss, especially a man that, again, is perpetually angry. That's funny. I'd say a solid opener. Uh, that was enjoyable. 
Oh, the addiction are the ROH champions? Is that what they just said? I I, I believe so. This is a development that I was unaware of. Huh. Okay. Chris Sabin is in Ring of Honor. Okay. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> a lot of ha a lot of stuff happening apparently. Chris Sabin's in ROH because he was in a part of a conspiracy with Daniels and, S and Kazarian. Maybe it's like the the, uh, the TNA Leavers movement. I don't know. I don't know. We're here to reclaim wrestling or something together. A bunch of it's former ROH guys that went to TNA and then came back to ROH. Yeah. Although, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think Daniels is the only guy who was ever really prominent in ROH. I mean, now I guess we're kind of getting to recap everything that happened here. I guess we're going to find out that this is Chris Sabin. Yeah. So, uh, Chris Sabin, a part of the, I, I think it's the KRD. Yeah. Oh, man, okay. Now I'm beginning to understand. Look at that fan pointing at him. You! <laughs> I just love that the KRD wasn't somebody that everyone already knew who they were. Exactly. Oh, the heel turn by the addiction, though. I love heel Saban. He doesn't get to work heel enough. Yeah, I, I feel like, and I don't want to be that guy, but I almost have to wonder if him working heel is almost necessity, because, you know, TNA ruined his knees. He blew up both of his knees while working for that company. And I wonder if just working heel is easier for him to do. Um, so it's, so it's going to be very interesting to see him compete for that reason, because I know, I know a lot of people that, um, that I would talk to that either were TNA fans or just really big indie fans. They'd say, Oh, Chris Saban's done, you know, is his career's over. But I mean, clearly not if he's doing something as big as this. So Chris Saban, I think is a lot of detractors to kind of silence tonight. So, so all right. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like we're getting our Chris Saban versus, uh, Kushida match now because they, they're fighting over Alex Shelley, I guess. Yeah, and probably wants to recruit Alex Shelley for, for evil. And uh, I would actually hope that Alex Shelley would consider it Motor City Machine Guns for life. Yeah, I mean, Motor City Machine Guns were awesome, but Time Splitters are even better. Uh, yeah, I mean, they are really amazing. But? But I'm not ready to make that kind of statement yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Kushida's next. I don't know. I I feel like I... Oh, why is Red Dragon's music playing? Are we That's getting... exactly what Kevin Kelly just said! <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I, I'm, I'm assuming this is why there's always a little asterisk on, uh... You know, you know on those cards saying, you know, cards subject to change. So... Kyle O'Reilly's coming out? Where's Bob Fish? I guess Bob Fish isn't present. I guess Kyle O'Reilly... Is looking to take maybe Kushida's place, potentially? I mean, Kushida should be here tonight. I didn't hear about him being out. I didn't hear about Bob Fish being out, either. Red Dragon's supposed to be in a tag team match later on, I thought. Uh, well, this is definitely an interesting development, given all those implications. So what are we going to see? I mean, Kyle O'Reilly looks ready to compete. He's in his ring gear. Oh, yeah, I would not complain if Kyle O'Reilly was in this match. He's just so good. Oh, wow, well, Kevin Kelly just said the match is going to be a three-way. Okay. So we are going to see Kushida. Oh, oh this wow. This is turning into a three-way. Holy crap. This is going to be retarded. Yeah, this match just became infinitely more explosive. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, yeah. Kyle O'Reilly is so good, dude. I mean, I love Bobby Fish, but Kyle O'Reilly, though? See, now here's the thing. I'd say that it's going to be interesting to see Kyle O'Reilly in this format, but you and I watch PWG as well, and I was used to him being Pro Wrestling Gorilla's world champion. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've seen what he can do in singles, so, you know, you just add an extra guy in there. Kushida, on the other hand, he's kind of the interesting prospect, because I think I'm really only used to seeing him with Alex Shelley. Yeah. So let's see what he can do here. Yeah, that's something uh, that you and I have in common. I haven't seen Kushida in any singles matches. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to see what he can do when he doesn't have an Alex Shelley to turn to when times get rough. I mean, how deep uh, can Kushida dig to pull out the victory? That entrance, though. I mean, but that's not to say that you should sleep on Kushida. I mean, this guy is amazing. The stuff that he does is that. I'm surprised these guys are getting as many streamers as they are. I thought that everyone would be saving them for freaking Nakamura and Okada. 
Yeah, really. <laughs> Look at Chris Saban just clearing the ring out. What a humanitarian, just trying to keep everything clean. Oh, yeah. Such a great humanitarian. That's why he costs the frickin' Red Dragon their championships. Although I love the old turn by the addiction on the face of Chris see, Saban. Yeah, did you see him. that? He just wiped his butt with the streamers and threw it at Kushida. That's a real humanitarian, John. What, 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 a, what a heel. I love douchebags. You do. It's, it's a little <laughs> off-putting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So who do you got in this match, Ashton, when you look at this, um, you know, this wild card in Kyle O'Reilly? Oh, man. I feel like Kyle O'Reilly was probably... No, you know what? I'm going to you know what? I'm gonna say Saban. I think Saban's going to win this. Yeah, you know what? I, I think Saban, because of the recent revelations and everything, they probably want to give him momentum. Yeah. So I, I, I'm I, actually... I, I almost said that, oh, Kyle O'Reilly was added to this match to eat the pin, but why would you want one of the two guys in Red Dragon to eat the pin? Yeah, Kushida is definitely eating the penny, and I think uh, Saban's going to get it on him. And there's a quick jab there by Saban. Now, here we go. He was so proud of himself for it, too. <laughs> kind of like when Fandango attacked El Torito. Yeah. Never forget. Nice vertical leap there by Saban. Look, look at that roll through there. I don't know. Oh, man. These guys are all working together. This is going to be amazing. Holy oh crap. God. All the arm drags in the world. The triple drop oh, kick. The triple oh, the drop my God. kick. Oh, my God. I'll tell you, for a man who suffered severe injuries to both of his knees, Bro, Chris Saban's moving at a pretty fast pace. It's <laughs> X Division 2005 all over again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hail freaking Saban, bitches. I don't know what everybody else is talking about. <laughs> oh, misses the double clothesline there. Gets kicked in the gut. Oh, are we going to get teamwork here between Kyle O'Reilly and Kushida? And, and, yeah, and just, oh, look at Chris Saban, though, able to slide out of the ring. Let them fight amongst each themselves. You know, Chris Saban, you know, he doesn't just have the speed and the quickness as the other two competitors. I do think, you know, again, at the risk of sounding like a dick, he may even be more intelligent than these two guys. Because these two guys, you know, what they're on to their pride and everything else. They're going to slug it out. They're going to fight it out. <laughs> With a shaky leg. Wow. So. The, uh, I guess uh, Kyle O'Reilly <laughs> having an impromptu dance session. What a kick to the head there of Kushida. Oh, look at Saban there. See, that's what I'm talking about, Ashton. Yep. Saban's going to be the more opportunistic guy of the three in and this match. And then he shoves him into the guardrail. Brilliant. Oh, but Kushida with the freaking seated senton. Yeah, Kushida not taking that crap goes off the apron. Oh, Dude. wow. Kushida's but. definitely taking the lead right now. I think it comes down to him and Saban, which I mean, we kind of knew coming into this. Absolutely. I mean, this was the originally scheduled match. Kyle O'Reilly, again, is that X Factor, if you will, as the last-minute addition. And nice Do we number. think that he's actually going to make a difference, though? Do we think that he's going to get a pin or eat a pin? Uh, no, again, I think Kushida's going to eat the pin, you know, from Saban, so that's kind of my prediction. So do we think that they just kind of added Kyle O'Reilly to this match because maybe Bob Fish is hurt and they wanted to give O'Reilly something to do? Maybe, in which case I wonder how that changes the dynamic of the tag team match we were expecting later tonight. Well, I think it was originally going to be a triple threat tag team match, so now it'll be just a more traditional one on or two on two. I'll tell you something right now, though, Ash. And I said Kushida was going to eat the pin. Well, right now Kushida's making me eat my words because he's dominating right now. Yeah, he's he's awesome. I enjoy all three of these guys so much. And see, oh. look at Saban again. Saban. Was that an eye rake? Oh my god, yeah. so dirty. <laughs> Saban's great. He's he gotten really so much better since he's been allowed to work heel. Holy crap. I'd say the thing is, I, I feel like you have less constraints on the Indies, because he did work heel in TNA, but I really wasn't I was that. talking about TNA, dude. He was even better as a heel in TNA, in my opinion. Uh, see, I'm not so sure about that. I'm really enjoying his heel work right here. I felt like his heel work in TNA. I mean, it was it was good enough, I suppose, but like this, he's just really like come into his own. Well, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to say that his heel work in TNA was better than his heel work on the Indies. I'm saying that right. his heel work in TNA was better than his face work in TNA. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And what a, what a toss there, though, by Saban earlier into the corner. I mean, he, now he's taking control. Nice jackknife cover there by Saban. Is that what that's called, jackknife? Yeah. You know these terms better than me. Dude, when I wanted to be a play-by-play -play commentator, I tried to learn every hold. It's excruciating, but it's possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I know the more exotic stuff. See? And that's all that matters, man. You know, matters. you know the basics. You know the fundamentals. That's what I need to learn. <laughs> And look at oh, oh double stun in the face. That's like an uh, old school Eddie Guerrero maneuver there. I yeah. mean, my God, pulling out all the stops is saving and now. It's kind of choking. asshole chance. <laughs> <laughs> he's directing the choir. <laughs> he's uh, he's being the conductor. 
He really loves spinning those strings on his pants. It's kind of distracting. i tell you, Saban is just reveling in this right now. Nice snapmare takedown. And now look at this. What it's got kind he... of like... Oh, like a crucifix hold almost. Yeah. Or not crucifix. Hangman. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I was... Never mind. Kyle O'Reilly now in the corner. Irish whip. Oh, look at that. Stops oh, no. it. Goes underneath. Kick. And all... Slap. Kicks. Knee. Oh, knees. Kick. Sweep the leg. Sweep. Wow. I'll tell He's you, that's so what, good. That's what makes Kyle O'Reilly so dangerous. When he can establish a pace, it is so hard to stop him. But yeah. Kushida's going to try here. Oh, but look at that. He's the freaking Captain Falcon. Oh, the... my God. Look at Kyle O'Reilly, the submission specialist here with the cross arm breaker on the ropes. But save oh, it again. Super kick. Taking a page out of the Young Bucks book. Not only that, but again. Sees a blind spot in the other man's offense and exploits it. How brilliant yep. is Chris Saban? Yep. He I is mean, this, so good. This is really isn't about my affinity for douchebags, folks. I mean, Chris Saban is wrestling a brilliant matchup it's right now. It's smart. It's just smart. Exactly. Oh, wait. Could we, could we see Cradle Shock here? Oh, oh it looks like out of it. It. Oh, yeah. No, the like it's not. Now Saban charging. Don't yes. know how smart that was. Sheena, oh, kick to Kyle O'Reilly. And another one to Saban. Oh, I'll tell you, I think Kushida has... Oh, the, the double look, arm trap. Oh, look at this. The, 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 the hang on the arm. and Oh, there's the arm breakers there against the ropes. Wow. So good. That's smart by Kushida because you figure for Saban it takes away the cradle shock. And for Kyle O'Reilly, I mean, the litany of submission holds that he knows. Yeah, dude. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly's submissions are ridiculous. Absolutely. He's such an MMA wannabe, but it's so adorable on him. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know... He pulls I, it I, off so much better than Davey Richards ever did. Oh, the German! Oh, look Double. at that beautiful by Kushida, too! And Double oh, both kick men out. kick out. Holy crap, that was awesome. Dude, Kushida you. is destroying everyone right now. Yeah, Kushida's got something to prove, man. I, think I love would... that he literally has a watch drawn onto his wrist tape. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I think somehow we may have violated the laws of physics because Christina may have heard me talk smack about him eating the pin. He's like, screw you, guy. I'm going to win this thing. And oh, the wow. The key lock. Oh, but now but, oh with the dragons. Or no, that's not the dragon. The guillotine. Sleeper, it? Yeah, guillotine. The guillotine dragon sleeper's there. upside down. Man, the, even the submission wrestling between these guys has just been so on point. I mean, mainly Kushida, apparently, and Kyle O'Reilly. Chris Saban's strolling out of the ring like, yeah, you guys, you guys take care of this. We don't really want Alex Shelley that much. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I'll tell you again, Chris Saban being smart. Cause oh, gonna... that looked so painful. Yeah, they're, they're killing each other with these kicks now to each other's arms, exchanging uh, blows there. But, but again, these guys are fighting on pride and not wanting to give in. Chris Saban's like, screw that, man. I'm going to take my breath. I'm going to yep. recoup myself. And that's what's going to make me the winner of this thing. Oh, look at Kyle O'Reilly. there with the <laughs> That's a regal flex. What was well, that? The Regal Plex? Yeah, I call it the Regal Plex because I first saw it with the Ring Regal. I'm sure there's a more technical term, to be fair, but I, I first was saw... I call it a Saito Suplex, but I think there's that's something else entirely. Uh, yeah, the first time I saw William Regal do that move was to Paul London. I cringed. I thought he broke London's neck. I freaking and... Paul London. He's so good. It's funny, too, because if you think about it, you and I both love different members of the best tag team of the mid-2000s. <laughs> yeah, really. Because you said, freaking love Spanky, and I love Paul London. Oh, the Brian Kendrick, one of my favorite gimmicks ever. It's a shame that he really couldn't get his stuff together, because that was just amazing. And again, Saban tried to tempt him to clear shot, but Kushida had Kyle O'Reilly's back, and now Kushida and Saban inadvertently were together. Now Saban kind of standing in the background. I'm telling you, I, I really, I have to question. I'm surprised that Kushida and Kyle O'Reilly have taken their eyes off Chris Saban as much as they have in this match. Um, oh, but look at Kylo. Oh, Kylo Riley there with the shot to the face. What a forearm. Oh. Oh, Double both of Dean Ambrose. <laughs> look at the freaking facial expressions and body language of Kylo Riley. He's so yeah. good. He was totally channeling Dean Ambrose there. That whole scene. He really was. Yeah, good point. Oh, man. And now look, look at that. He kept control of Saban's arm, and I kept talking about Saban's brilliance. Let's talk about Kyle O'Reilly's for a moment, keeping control of the arm to get that cross arm breaker. Can Saban's we just kidding. call it an arm bar? <laughs> and, 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 oh! There's a shit in there with control. the moonsault. Breaks it up, but he's not able to get the pin right away. That could be costly there. Yep. 
I think the reset button's pretty much been hit on this match because all three men are down. Oh, uh, yeah, the reset button with about minus 80% stamina. <laughs> exactly. You gotta imagine whoever gets to their feet first could take control of this thing, and I think that's going to be Kushida. Kyle Ryan with the charge. Oh, inverted STO into the turnbuckle. Yeah, beautifully done there by Kushida. Super kick. Oh, super kick to the head. Oh, Saban's equilibrium totally thrown off, and now Kushida. Slice bread number two. Maybe. And... Oh, he oh. went for it. No, we got close. Cradle shock. Cradle shock time, finally. And oh, look, Chicken brilliant. No cradle oh. shock, though. He turned it... Oh, into the key lock again. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Or Kimura lock. That's what it is, Kimura. Oh, man. Oh, but it's, 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 it's saving... Oh, oh, oh beautiful body. He kept Kushida. it locked in. Oh, my look God. He's tapping. Holy crap. Kushida won. Holy shit. Yeah, what happened to eating the pin, John? No one ate the pin. Chris Saban tapped like a the, bitch. The only person who ate anything was me. Holy crow. shit. Yeah, you ate a whole lot of crow. Honestly, though, I'm Although, happy. you know what, though? I said that same thing, so I also ate a lot of crow. <laughs> I think I think Kushida showed us both something tonight. Yeah, he's awesome. I, I think sure. now I'm going to start respecting him as his own singles competitor and not just as one half of the time splitters, because... Dude, I mean, put this in perspective. He just beat Kyle O'Reilly and Chris Saban in a triple threat. At the same time. At the sa yeah, at the same time. I mean, that's no joke. I mean, Red Dragon, one of the most dominant tag teams in ROH, Kyle O'Reilly, former PWG World Champion, Chris Saban's accolades go on And forever. there's the tap. Right and there's the, the tap, tap out. Holy crap. Chris Saban actually tapped. Kushida. I definitely that, did not think that I would see that in this match. <laughs> he looks so salty. <laughs> Are we going to get a Kushida, Kyle O'Reilly handshake? They've done it enough. Oh, come on, Kyle. Come on, Kyle. Be a, be a sportsman. Shake the hand and, 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 he, and he's shaking. I mean, Kushida, I think, earned everybody's respect and I certainly earned mine. Yeah, absolutely. Well, everybody fun. except for Chris Saban. Yeah, really. Everybody except Chris Saban. Chris Saban respects nobody except for the addiction. <sighs> what a win. That was great. That was really good. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what can top that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, I still can't believe he pulled that off. And if that's any indication of how the remainder of this card's going to go, what one hell of a show we are in for. Oh, that match is going to be so good. Matt Seidel and Jushin Thunder Liger versus The Kingdom. Taven and yeah. Bennett. That's going to be crazy. Oh, man. We have got the kingdom coming out. It looks like we didn't have to wait as long as I thought we would. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, yeah, you know, my only question is where's Adam Cole? And why is he not in this match? I guess because he didn't want to be in front of a crowd of window leggers. You know, not that I blame him, but really is a shame. Maria's here. Oh, man, we got Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, the IWGP heavyweight tag team champions, apparently. Did you know that? No, I did not. Yeah, dude, how cool is that? Great to see the kingdom with gold. That, for what it's worth, that's the those are the titles that uh, Anderson and Gallows had, not the junior titles that the Red Dragon had. Ah. Uh, I think the junior champions are Rapungi Vice. Oh yeah, you know I think you and I were kind of talking about that. Okay. I'm sure Adam Cole was proud of his boys. Oh, absolutely, no doubt. Yeah. But we uh, no, we miss you, Adam Cole. We really do. Yeah. He needs to come back. I, I need a little Adam Cole in my life. <laughs> and, I mean, you got to imagine, dude, the kingdom is riding high since winning that gold. And, and they really seem to have been on quite a roll lately. I mean, the last ROH show that you and I watched, even though they failed to beat Red Dragon, I'll say this, I feel like they came closer than uh, than any other team that is until the addiction came along, apparently. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they, it was I love that the, the the kingdom literally got three streamers, and the three streamers were specifically red, white, and blue. Yeah. <laughs> Patriotism. Yeah, the kingdom is the most American team on the roster. And here is uh, Matt Seidel, a man who, who uh, we want to talk about people being on a roll. Matt Seidel has done very well for himself since returning to Ring of Honor. In fact, oh, we yeah. were. I'm waiting for him to win the TV title from Lethal. Yeah, you know, you've been saying that for a while. I was getting ready to say one of us said something about either the TV title or the world title, and that's right. You were saying you fully uh, expect Seidel to be the one to end Lethal's TV title reign. It just makes sense to me. 
I mean, he, he's certainly more than capable of pulling it off, and then crowd here loves him. He's awesome. Matt Seidel's got to be really pumped up, I would imagine, to be teaming with that Japanese legend in Jushin Thunder Liger. Absolutely. And Jushin Thunder Liger, he's nothing to sneeze at either. I mean, even a man for his age, you know, he's quite the grappler. So uh, this is quite a team for the kingdom to contend with. Duh. But the X factor here, Ashton, in this matchup may be the familiarity of the two teams. I mean, Matt Seidel and Jason Thunder Liger do not have nearly the extensive history, you know, of the kingdom. Yeah. So that is definitely going to come into play here. So do we think that uh, Seidel is eating the pin in this? Um, Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Liger eat the pin because he is really... No, the Japanese guys almost never eat the pin now that I think about it. Yeah, so you that, know that's what, probably yes. why that's probably why Kushida did so well. That like New Japan guys almost always win. Like actually, you know what? I shouldn't say that. They tend to go fifty fifty with ROH, but I feel like Liger is one of the guys that rarely. I don't even know. He's like he's like sacred, right? He's like that legend status. So you kind of want to preserve. It's like him. him. I don't know. Maybe not because he's like. Didn't he lose to? Uh, didn't he face Adam Cole at one point and lose to him? He faced Adam Cole at one point and lost him. I feel like he faced Jay Lethal at one point and lost him, too. Yeah, so maybe he is one of the guys that'll eat the pin. I don't know. I don't know. I, I could just see... Look like, how much taller Taven and Bennett are than Seidel and Jush and Thunder Liger. I know. You know, ab- absolutely. <laughs> Even though they're both at zero years teamed, I mean, still, when you want to just talk about in general, I mean, the kingdom is still far more familiar with each other yeah. than uh, Seidel. Zero years, but there's still, I mean... If they would be using decimals, there's no, their number wouldn't be zero anymore, whereas the other team still would be. Right, exactly. Excellently put, as you see now, Matt Taven putting his lips to the IWGP uh, Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. And you got to imagine, I mean, hell, Matt Taven, you know, you got to imagine that's that's what he wanted, because I, I, think, I think he went to the kingdom and, and came home, you know, in Mike Bennett's words, after he failed to take the TV title from Jay Lethal. He got frustrated, and he said, you know, where do I go from here? What do I do now? And, you know, since coming back to the kingdom, he's already got gold back around his waist. So if you're Matt Taven, you have to look at it as a profitable investment at the end of the line. So is it just me, or has the kingdom almost adopted, like, a greaser gimmick? Like, freaking <laughs> Deuce and Domino, almost. Yeah, Deuce and Domino, except less less cheesy and less cartoony. I personally never cared for Deuce and Domino. I think I remember you saying that you were kind of a fan of those guys, weren't you? Yeah, I did. I, I, I really like Cliff Compton, and... Cherry was hot, and they were good in the ring. Yeah, so I think the best part for me about Deuce and Domino was their old finisher. The I think they called it the crack him in the mouth, and you know that was like a snapmare, I guess, like holdover into like just a huge like sucker little kick right in the face. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, but keeping it in the present here, Matt Taven starting it off with Matt Seidel. It's the battle of the mats. And I gotta say this, I mean, all the uh, accolades that I was uh, showering upon Matt Seidel when he came out here, you know, with his athleticism and how great he's been doing, Matt Taven is one hell of an athlete. Every time I see Taven, I see Jimmy Snuka. Yeah. He looks so much like him. I mean, hell, at the, uh, I think, I think ROH calls it their, uh, their, their base brawl or their, their fall brawl or just something like that, where they had the, uh, the event at the baseball diamond. Uh, Matt Taven at a cage match against Jay Lethal. He did a snooker esque flash off the cage. Yep. So, Taven, I think, has got all the potential. I mean, to really be, you know, a great uh, champion. I mean, hell, I guess he already is. I mean, again, he has gold now since turning his back on the fans and rejoining the kingdom and doing all that. And him and Bennett, I think, are incredible. Well, and he, he is a former ta- uh, TV champion, too. Exactly, yeah. Had the longest reign before Lethal came along, and, and yep. Lethal's just in another class entirely. He really um, is. Is, is he on this to show him. tonight? He's got to be. Yeah. I can't wait to talk about him tonight. And look at Seidel there. Double oh stop already. God. Beautiful. Look at, uh, <laughs> wow. I love it. <laughs> They're so good together. Matt Taven's so scarred by Seidel getting that offense. He needed comfort from Mike Bennett. And, and in comes was, Jushin Thunder Liger. Here comes the legendary Jushin Thunder Liger, yes. <laughs> he wants to get the crowd pumped up, but they just aren't. <laughs> They're so good. Oh, my God. Oh, man. 
<laughs> I love it. I love Bennett, man. He's so good. I mean, dude, you and I have talked about Bennett for some time. I still say, and I will continue to say until maybe he's just too old for the system, that WWE not picking this young man up is a travesty. I love Mike Bennett. Too old for the system? Well, how old is he now? Isn't he only, like, in his late 20s? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to keep saying the WWE should pick him up until I just feel like, ah, screw it, they're never going to do it because he's at a certain age. So, like, what, like 34? Probably. But, I mean... Oh, man. The tests of strength. Oh, man, he's an underlock. He's like, screw that, kick to the gut. Yeah. Oh, but then, oh, Bennett still gets the better of him with the shoulder block. Well, I mean, for what it's worth, Bennett's six feet tall. Jushin Thunderlager's like 5'7". He's got like a 5-inch, 35-pound weight advantage on him. Oh, look at that there. Jushin Thunderlager, though, does have the speed. Goes over the ropes. And, oh, look at that. Mike Bennett able to avoid it. Uh, I don't know if I would say Jushin Thunderlager has the speed. I mean, uh, he's smaller, but he's also like 50. That's true. That's true. But he was shooting off those ropes, uh... Pretty quick, and with Matt Seidel at his side, I mean, you see that. Seidel has the speed, that's for sure, but I don't yeah. know like her. <laughs> oh, coming off the apron here, Seidel, and there are the double knees there, and Taven gets taken out. Is there a name for that move, John? Not that I know of, and look at Maria already getting involved. Maria could be the difference maker in this Super match. Kick. Super kick! Super kick. Telling you, I'm waiting for the Young Bucks to sue somebody, and it only gets a two count. Well, I mean, it's not like they invented the super kick true they just made it the best thing going today yeah yeah that's true it's like hey Shawn michaels you stepped down so we stepped up you're welcome the japanese referee is so good look at mike bennett just not giving a single crap about the referees uh a reprimand uh, reprimandations just stomping a mud hole in liger here and now see this is where that experience comes into play bennett stomped the mud hole taven took advantage of the distraction he did like the foot choke on the throat just a perfect game plan here being utilized by the kingdom. Yep. I mean, they're channeling the spirit of the dragon. I've got till five. <laughs> and, oh, oh and dude. I'll... Is that Moonlight Drive? <laughs> yeah, it was. And I'm going to bite my tongue about that because, you know, I do like Taven, but he better learn his place. <laughs> he goes for the cover there on Liger. And Liger kicks it out. I'm pretty sure. I like how Liger feels the need. Place. I'm, I'm pretty sure that telling someone that they need to learn their place isn't the same as biting your tongue. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I, I should say, also, the, you know, not biting my tongue. I love how Liger, when he kegged out there, felt the need to throw his hand up and wag his finger. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, not enough offense. Dude, Michael Bennett is too good right now. He is. If I could, if I could get at least two, I really, I, I know the traditional number is five, but I, I don't really have that many on my mind right now. But two immediate guys that I would call up to WWE NXT: Mike Bennett and Chuck Taylor. I fucking love Chuck Taylor. You and your <laughs> Chuck Taylor. I think Chuck Taylor is perfect in the role that he's in. I don't think WWE would know what to do with him. Damn right they wouldn't. But my two choices would be Bennett and Brian Cage. But see, notice how we both share Bennett. That's how good he is. And look at that drop kick. Speaking of good, that was beautiful. Right on the button. Actually, if we're talking exclusively about prospects, as in guys that could be WrestleMania main eventers in five years, Moose and Donovan Dijak. <laughs> yeah. Or I guess actually it would be Moose and Brian Cage, because I still think that he has that kind of potential. And again, look at that teamwork from the kingdom, but still not enough to keep doing something. And again with the finger like, uh, 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 getting closer. He does that a lot. Just so weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I love it again. The fundamentals of tag team wrestling, keeping the opposition isolated, making that ring seem like it stretches for miles to get to his tag team partner. Is the kingdom doing to Jushin Thunder? I like sense Geary. Geary there. Oh, there. Oh, and that's a problem. First major miscue of the kingdom. Sidal, Nice. No, no senton. seated senton. Shoots off the ropes, ducks the clothesline. And uh, snap Hurricane Rana there. Oh, nice. Oh, grabs the leg. Nice. Leg sweep. sweep. Moonsault. Standing moonsault coming. No. Caught the leg of Taven. Takes him down. What's Seidel going to do? Standing moonsault. Beautiful to oh, Taven. Oh, wow. Looked like his knee hit Taven right in the head. Well, now I'm a little confused, actually. I thought Bennett was the legal man, but I guess Taven's the legal man. I don't even know. I've lost track. I don't know if the referee even knows. <laughs> oh, look at that. Taven with the suplex attempt at Seidel, though. He's going to catch home. him. 
We're going to get a Jawbreaker. Oh, beautiful Jawbreaker and uh, I, I, drop. I guess, yeah, I don't even know what you'd call that. I guess like seated light drop there. Oh, and now Seidel going to the top rope. Can't imagine they'd be going for the Shooting Star Press already. No, he's not going to go for anything because Michael Bennett's a thing. Yeah, Michael Bennett is a thing. And there's, look at that, snapping off the rope there by Taven. And, oh, nice Inziguri. Yeah, Inziguri, excuse me. And now Juice under Liger. Double, double clothesline. Oh, but Bennett, Bennett didn't go over. <laughs> just like, sorry guys, sorry, I'm just going to slide out. Suicide dive? Oh, Maria's going to... Oh, oh. Wow. What? What? Wow. Really, Maria? Trying to hypnotize him? Really? Well, I mean, hell. You know, I think that's what makes her a great valet. Just buying Mike Bennett valuable time. And oh! Still, <laughs> the double clothesline. Line. Maria's still trying. <laughs> Jusin's going to get some. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. Oh, Is he going to do it again? Yes! <laughs> oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Three times now. It's like, I'm going to give it to her. Oh, my God, motorboat! Jushin Thunder Liger is a legend! As if he wasn't already. And the double finally, kick. finally, that's Worth the double it. Super. Worth it. <laughs> Ned Seidel's probably thinking, oh, come on, man. And then Liger's just like, dude, I finger wagged twice. You should have known this was coming. Yeah, and Maria Kanellis is just like, you know what? I just got motorboated by a Japanese legend. I'm okay with this. <laughs> I know she made a big deal out of it when she made out with Ric Flair and he sold it with the Flair flop. Nice. And, oh! oh, what a super kick. How is Seidel even still moving right now? And that's where the experience advantage becomes lethal. Now look at this, the assist. Power bomb, lung blower maybe? I don't know. Oh, something's coming. I, oh, spike. oh, assisted spike, yeah. Spike, I'll drive her. There it is. Count to 100. This one's over. It's got to be. Yeah, Two, Jushin's not even around. Great. There it is. Oh, wow. What a great freaking match. Oh, <laughs> look, Taven's hugging the ref. That's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, Maria made that whole thing work. <laughs> he did. Maria was the difference maker here, you guys. If Jushin Underliger did not take his eyes off the ball, he would have been able to give coverage to Seidel. It just could not happen. That was great. And just as, um, I mean, hell, you and I both got the right result, just wrong pinning combination. And just like we were saying, Ashton, the experience advantage made all the difference in the world. I thought that guys... I said at the very beginning that Seidel was going to eat the pin. Oh, did you? Then, oh, you know what? Yeah, you did. And then, I don't know, maybe you kind of convinced yourself a little bit that Liger might have eaten the pin, but I think you stuck. Yeah, I think you're correct. Yeah. But regardless, I mean, we both knew, I think, the kingdom was winning. Oh, he liked the title. Really, Bennett? God. And yeah, the, the only boat of a century. Oh man, you know, I there for so long. I think Jushin Thunder Liger was the real winner of this match. I know, right? He didn't need the pin. He got the motorboat Maria. I mean, how can you possibly lose? <laughs> he, honestly, after that, he probably doesn't even give a shit. He's probably just looking at Seidel and he just wants to shrug and be like, "Ah, eh, we'll get him next time." Doesn't matter. Still motorboated. <laughs> but again, I mean, like we said. That experience of these two together made all the difference in the world. These guys gel together brilliantly. I mean, that's why they are the IWGP. I uh, freaking love James. their theme music, too. Yeah. Them and Red Dragon for best theme music in ROH. Definitely. And Adam Cole. Adam Cole! Back is Adam Cole? Why is he not on this card? I'm so disappointed. I know, dude. When you, when you ran down this card both night one and night two, I just kept expecting to hear... Adam Cole, and when, you know, he never came, I'm, I just cried a little inside. <laughs> well, just as long as it was only on the inside. Exactly. <laughs> Adam Cole would not appreciate external tears. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There goes Jushin. Oh, man. Got <laughs> caught with that super kick, and then it was all over. <laughs> the double super kick, yeah. Speaking of super kicks, I wonder if we're going to get a Young Bucks match soon. Yeah, hopefully. Oh, Alexander versus Okada! Oh, I think this is going to be the first match that an ROH guy... Or no, wait. No, because uh, Saban ate the pin first, so never mind. But yeah, Alexander's losing this, no doubt in my mind. But. Yeah, Okada is going to make it rain all over this arena tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. 
I mean, I love Cedric Alexander, but come on now, this is Okada. Last time we saw Cedric Alexander, I mean, I'm just going to make this point while entrances are being made, Ash, and it seemed like he was being a little frustrated. I mean, commentary even noted, I think Cedric Alexander's trying to find himself, trying to get on a winning path, and he lost, like, I think it was like a seven-pack challenge, the last ROH event that you and I watched, and he was so frustrated, he wouldn't even shake hands with his long-time uh, friend, uh, C.J. Coleman. Caprice Coleman. Caprice Coleman, excuse me. And, uh, yeah, and that, that shocked everybody. You know, what is Rainmaker, it? baby! And yeah, here comes the Rainmaker. I'll tell you, Okada made a huge fan out of me at Wrestle Kingdom 9 in his match with Tanahashi. The guy is just exceptional, and that Lariat is serious. I mean, just devastating. He's so good. If anybody not named Nakamura has a claim to the best in the world right now, it's him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, we are so amped to see Shinsuke Nakamura tonight. It's going to be ridiculous. Oh, and he, dude, he's facing ACH. Yeah, that's just going to be insanity. That's the thing to me, because I think that, like, if you would make just... A, if you would just give me a gigantic roster of every pro wrestler based in America, ACH would be probably number, like, one or two for me. Right. Just as far as, like, guys that I just love watching work. Right, yeah. He's up there, man. Like, I, nobody in WWE is as much fun, in my opinion, to watch as freaking ACH. ACH, oh yeah. If, if you've never seen ACH before, folks, I, uh, yeah, you need to change that immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of all that bling, Okada. Okada, 6'2", 236. Yeah. Alexander, 5'10", 230. A little bit stubbier than Okada. Yeah, and you figure uh, a slight height differential between the two guys, but I don't really know if that's going to play too much into this matchup. Well, you got to realize, 4-inch height difference translates to a big reach difference. That is true. And that's an excellent point there, Ashton. And but, uh, not only that, but like I said, even though Alexander is four inches shorter, he's only six pounds lighter. So he is thicker than Okada. So I would argue that that means that he has more stopping power. The question that I am looking to see get answered in this matchup is what's the mindset of Secretary Alexander going to be? What's his mentality going to be? Because, again, he seems to have been frustrated lately. He seems like he's kind of been... You know, losing himself a little bit. You know, he's been on a little bit of a downward spiral. But a win against Okada, oh I think, God. is a huge deal. That would be the biggest win of, of Cedric Alexander's career, I think. Uh, oh, without question. I mean, the biggest uh, win of his career since he beat Roderick Strong a while back. You know, without a doubt. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say Okada's a bigger deal than Roderick Strong. And I would agree with that. I, I, I would absolutely agree with that. And you see now uh, Okada there with the, the hammer lock early on. Cedric Alexander able to create the distance. Uh, you know, there's uh Oh, I love that. I wow. freaking love Okada of the mind games, though. And, and see, that's just it. Cedric Alexander cannot afford to play these mind games with Okada, but you know he's going to. And then that's just where I give Okada a clear advantage. Oh, look at the yeah, shoulder yeah. block there. Alexander definitely has more stopping power. What you guys got to realize is for, for the typical adult male... Every inch that somebody gets taller, they should put on about seven pounds to maintain their, I guess, proportions. And Okada's four pounds or four inches taller, so he should be about 28 pounds heavier than Alexander for them to kind of have the same proportions. But he's only six pounds, so Alexander is quite a bit thicker than Okada. And you see uh, Alexander giving a slight smirk there to Okada when he won that little exchange there. Yeah, so that was that was yeah. This is this is going to be a match of one-upsmanship. Oh, absolutely. And Cedric Alexander, I think he needed that little confidence boost. He needs to stay out of his own head in this thing. He needs to be confident. He needs to believe that he can beat Okada because this is not an opportunity that comes every day. I'd be saying the same thing uh, to ACH later on. I was just going to say again though the the reach advantage when they get into those lockups. Okada's reach advantage comes out in full force because he immediately goes for the headlock and he gets it. Nice shoulder block there by Okada. Yep. And a beautiful vertical keep there by Zendrick Alexander, but... Oh, look at that. Goes underneath. And there's nice the drop, drop kick. kick. Wow. Are we going to get to see the Okada drop kick this match? Oh, definitely. That's my question. 
I'd be tempted to sue if we didn't. I mean, Okada's offense is beautiful. You need to get all that shit in. The dropkick, the rainmaker, everything. Well, if he hits the rainmaker, it's over. It's over. Yeah, it's over. The only person to ever kick out of that thing is Tanahashi. Bastard. Don't remind me. Don't remind me. <laughs> is Tanahashi on this show tonight? I don't remember. I don't think he is. I don't think he is either. Nice, a nice low dropkick there by uh, Alexander and kick out there by Okada. And I think he was on the uh, the Tuesday and Wednesday shows, but I don't think he's on this one or tomorrow night. Right. Oh, such a guy, Alexander seems to be stalking Okada in the corner, and Okada shoots him off. Alexander lands on the apron. Nice form to the face. He's going for a springboard or something. Oh, Nothing. look at that. Able to keep his poise, though. And now again, we're doing this again. Oh, oh this Okada. Tough there's and a there's drop, the drop kick. kick. Oh, my God. I just realized Okada's drop kick isn't as impressive as Moose's. Wow. Moose hits people in the head on the top turnbuckle. Yeah. Okada had to settle for the chest. Oh, wait a minute. What? What's going on here? Blackout? Blackout? What? Is something actually happening, or is this just like a power issue? I, I can't even tell. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it it's... It seems power. like a power issue. Yeah. Because nothing's actually happening. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what to say here. They kind of, like, brought up the... Oh, there we go, emergency lighting. Well, I guess this match is... This is so cool, an in-the-dark match. There we go. And look at Okada just laughing. Oh, that's not a good place to be. (laughs) I know, right? The lights go out, and when they come back on, Cedric Alexander is in, like, the worst position ever. Oh, my God. Okada taking a page out of Randy Orton's playbook, that apron-hung DDT. Yeah. Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. <laughs> That's a game-changing maneuver, too, a, a move like that. You see Cedric Alexander holding the head. He better be careful that he's not concussed or doesn't have any problems. But uh, Okada... Stuffed neck. Yeah, really. I mean, that that looked bad. But uh, That'll put out. a freaking jaw in your chest. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice phrase in there. Well said. I mean, uh, Alexander just seems like he's in a bad way. But I wouldn't count out Cedric Alexander. I mean, despite the... Uh, the woes that he's currently suffering from. Uh, let's not, uh, you know, underestimate Cedric Alexander here. Guy's an exceptional athlete. I think uh, Cedric Alexander's best trait is his selling. He's so good yeah. at making everything look painful. Uh, absolutely. But he doesn't oversell. He's not like a Dolph Ziggler where he's just flopping around all over the place. I think that he has, like, found the perfect medium where, like, he sells enough that everything looks like it hurts, but he doesn't oversell to the point that he looks like he dies after every bit of offense. I like how Okada is just eating everything that Cedric Alexander throws at him, though. I mean, look at him. He actually it looks almost like he's enjoying it. It seems like he's getting pumped up with each chop. Yep, that's that Japanese honor, man. Nice never take Now, what a single leg drop gave to the face. Yeah, that looked painful. And like Alexander is selling the hell out of it, too. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, kind of build up Cedric Alexander here, because, again, the guy is just a great athlete and everything, but really, Okada's been kind of dominating this match, I feel like. Yeah, he kind of has. Really hasn't been much Cedric Alexander-based offense, and now you see the uh, the rear chin lock with the knee driven in the back. Can I just say I love Okada's attire? Oh, yeah. It's like, perfect. it literally looks like he's wearing golden boxer shorts. <laughs> I love how Okada just has, like, all that flamboyance in terms of the color and everything else, but, like, none of, really, no, not much pageantry when it comes to his in-ring work. Like, he gets right down to business. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting freaking, contrast, but it's one that it's, works. He's a freaking workhorse. Isn't that a word that somebody used to describe Tyson Kidd a few years ago? Yeah. Wasn't that Cena that said that? It may have been. I know a lot of people refer to Tyson Kidd as a workhorse, uh, you know, in the WWE. Well, that's what frickin' Okada is, too. Yeah, definitely. Except he's a main event workhorse. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure if Tyson Kidd was 6'2 and had the flashy personality that Okada has, he would be, too. Oh, without question. Oh, look at Cedric Alexander. This may be the moment. In nice! The the They're beautiful. That's is that what the, the technical term for that move is? The spinning in Zagiri? I mean, that's just what I went with, so it's probably another, a more refined term for it. But this is the opening that Cedric Alexander needed. Well, that's the thing, is that I've only ever known that move as Trouble in Paradise. Right. Great over-the-top rope flip from Cedric Alexander, too. And now Cedric Alexander may finally 
be able to establish a baseline of momentum here. That kick created the window of opportunity. And Sigurd Alexander, and again, we've had a... Oh, and out go the lights again. But we have the spotlight ready this time. I love that. I wonder if there's like a thunderstorm going on outside right now. Probably, but hey, Cedric Alexander was able to use the lighting while he had it to get that outside dive maneuver, so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, well, you can't say that the lighting has been favoring Okada just because the first time the lights went out, he ended up with an advantage because this time, Alexander has the advantage. Exactly, and oh, another springboard there. Springboard clothesline, yeah. Cedric Alexander has taken control finally in this matchup. Oh, but Okada, oh, look at the that. face. Alexander's going to reverse this, I feel it, yeah. Oh, man, he does, he does. Oh, oh what wow. was that? It's kind of like a, some type of a modified Mission Oku driver, it looked like to me. See, Holy and to God. me it looked like a modified, um, uh, Fisher, uh, no, what's it called? Uh, Falcon's Arrow. Ah, uh, Falcon's Arrow. And oh, Cedric Alexander, he's got to stay on Okada here. He's finally got the momentum that he really struggled, and I don't think that's... Oh, I think he was going to go for a blue thunderbomb there, but Okada's blocking. Okada stuffed him there, broke out of it. Oh, but look the at that slap! strike. Oh, but now he lifts up Alexander to the flapjack. Oh, wow. I love oh, Alexander. Cedric Alexander. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this selling is so on point. Alexander may not even know where he is. Leave it a face, is. maybe? No. No, Okada is recovering himself. There's the elbow. Back elbow. And just like that, Okada is back in control. And DDT. Spike DDT again. Kip up. Oh, oh kip boy. Up. Oh, are it we may gonna be the get... beginning of the end here. I was going to say, are we going to get a Rainmaker pose? But no, we just got a diving yes. European uppercut. Beautiful. Two. And of course... Oh, that, that was so up. close, too. Man, that, that diving European uppercut must be freaking deadly if he took that long to kick out. And what does it say about Okada that it seemed like Cedric Alexander was getting the ball rolling in his court for a little bit, and yet in moments Okada is back in control? Yeah. Because Cedric Alexander's lead, his possession of this matchup, if you will, didn't last very long at all. No, it and, really didn't. And now Okada going to the top rope, and there's the elbow drop, and he connects. This has got to be it. Is he going to do the pose? Is he going to do the pose? He's feeling it. Right, there it is. Here we go. Cedric Alexander has not known what to do, and I don't think it's going to matter here in the next few moments. Well, he's going to reverse the first attempt. He all, everyone always does. All right, Okada setting it up, and, and yes, as Ashton said, the reversal. And all oh, the DDT! Very nice. Beautiful. Not quite the spike DDT that Okada planted Alexander with earlier, but still a very impressive tornado DDT. A springboard tornado DDT at that. Absolutely, a desperation maneuver in my estimation. Yeah, that is, Alexander. that is a whole lot of momentum to go towards planting someone's head into the ground. Absolutely. And now Cedric Alexander, he needs to seize this opportunity. He needs to take advantage of this. He needs to get on Okada. And now he sees kind of stalking him there in the corner, waiting for Okada to regain a vertical base. You know what's crazy? I don't even know what Cedric Alexander's finisher is. Isn't it some type of backbreaker? Because, I mean, you know, the whole Roddy Strong view and everything. I oh, kind of... God, on the knee. There it is. Oh, the air raid siren there from Okada to... And, oh, there's a kick out. And I think you might be right. I think it's a like a, a fireman's carry backbreaker or something like that. Right. And, oh, wow. That was like a Desi Driver neckbreaker. Uh, 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 oh, man. <laughs> and there's a kick out there by Alexander. Yeah, that, I, I, would, I would love to know what the name of that last move was. It might have just been a Death Alley driver. Yeah, it seemed like, though, that had a little neckbreaker variation to it to me, but I could be wrong. Well, there's Jado cheering Okada on. Yeah, he was uh, successful earlier tonight. No, no, that was Jado, not Ghetto. Ah, uh, okay. Oh! Uh, Alexander has him up! Oh, oh the kick to the head! Good what lord! What a kick! But he's not down yet. That did not take Okada down all the way. Cedric Alexander fights. What a drop kick. Yeah, that'll do it. Now he's keep I feel running. like one of these times Okada is just going to explode out of the corner with a lariat. Oh, man, two. A third Three. drop kick. And oh, he's going for the pin. pin. One, two. two. Oh, my God, that was close. Holy crap, Okada's freaking close. Oh, my God. That near fall, though, John. 
I know. I think, I mean, Steve Carino had the same reaction you did. Kevin Kelly had the same reaction you did. And more importantly, Cedric Alexander had the same reaction you did. Look at that face. Oh, wow. That was one of the closest near falls I've ever seen. I said at the start of this match, Cedric Alexander had to stay out of his own head. And I feel like he's going back into it here. He can't get consumed by the fact that he did not beat Okada there. He's got to stay on the offensive. You don't mess with Okada, I'm telling you. You give that man an opening, he's going to beat you with oh, it. Oh, there's an opening. There's a lot. Oh, I was thinking about the lair, but Cedric Alexander again stuffed it. Oh, man, Okada. Oh, oh! oh he missed the drop kick this Cedric time. again. Alexander's got Okada scouted. Oh, the end's oh, Gary. Oh, Cedric Alexander called What's for it. What's he oh, going is he for? Gonna pull this off. What is no he going to go for, though? The backbreaker, I think. He did the throat slit. No way. Okada. Oh, Okada. Set it up. Here it is. Oh. Up. Oh, but Cedric Alexander again. There's, There's the, the drop, drop kick. kick He's oh, hit the man. Here. No. Tombstone. Tombstone. Oh, my God. Tombstone by Okada. He's not even going for the pin. He wants to end this his way. He wants the Rainmaker, now, and the this is going to be time, it. The third time is the charm. There's the Rainmaker. Oh, my God. It turned him inside out. Toots the half cover. Two, three Beautiful. count. What a freaking match. This this, this this card, dude. If this gets any better, this is going to be a legendary card. Absolutely. What a game effort. I'm I wasn't sorry. even expecting that match to be that good, but, yeah. oh, my God, that was so good. I honestly thought there was a moment in that match when Cedric Alexander did the throat slit that I thought he might pull off the upset of the century. Yeah, yeah. But Okada getting out of the backbreaker. It's the Rainmaker, and you could count to a 1,000 after that. Okada gets the win. Man. Okada's, Okada's stock continues to rise. And look at that showing respect for Cedric Alexander. I talked yeah. about Cedric Alexander's recent problems. Will he reciprocate the respect? That is the question. Oh, yeah, that is a good question. It's not a sure thing anymore. It's Alexander's not. Been kind of on the fringe lately. Cedric Alexander loses again. He's got to be frustrated with himself. Will he show respect? Uh, and, he, and there nope. it is. He, he stuffs him out. again. He stuffs him again. Come Cedric. on, Okada. Do a friggin' baseball slide and kick him. Cedric Alexander is a man that has lost his way. I thought there were, you know, bright horizons and a potential ROH World Championship waiting for that young man after he beat Roderick Strong, but he has not been able to find his way out. I love all the fans trying to reason with him. Like, come on, man, what's your problem? <laughs> and Okada, what a well-deserved victory. Yeah. I am, uh, I'm disappointed he got that handshake stuff, but yeah, there it is. There, yeah, he got his handshake from Jado, or Jado. That, uh, that's just beautiful. Great. That was match. such a good match. Oh, my God. Dude, this card has been absolutely fantastic. What a great We've show. We've only seen, what, three matches? Four matches? Yeah, I, I think I think four. that was, like, the fourth match, yeah. Yeah. And I think that there are, like, ten or eleven on this card. Oh, man. I think. I don't know. I feel like we're only, like, I don't know, like, 30% done. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, man, though, dude. Yes. Yeah. is crazy. Yeah, that was awesome. It's not even 9 o'clock yet. I know. it's That's nuts. And now who's coming out next? Rapunky Vice! Oh, man. Oh, yes! Trent Beretta and Rocky Romero. Triple threat tag team match. Wait, is, is Red Dragon going to be involved now? or? Uh, that is a good question. That is a good question. But more importantly, speaking of questions, Cassius Ono's questions finally got answered. Where's Trent? In ROH, apparently. <sighs> Beautiful. He's, he's been everywhere, man. He's been PWG. He's in a tag team with Chuck Taylor. He's been everywhere. Uh, Chuck Taylor. The only the person. Best friends. That's not, uh, it's not named Adam Cole. They're best friends, John. That, uh, that makes me jelly. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I always, uh, I always pictured me and Chuck Taylor completing puzzles together. Wow. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, oh, the decade. Okay. Oh, man, the decade. So I'm guessing BJ Whitmer and... And Adam Page, maybe? I think so. Because I freaking love Adam Page. With Steve Carino's son as the young boy. You, know, you gotta wonder Kobe, how Steve... Carino. Kobe Carino. You gotta wonder how Steve feels about that one. 
You mean King. King, King Carino. <laughs> Look at that. Ashton loves Steve Carino so much. He actually corrects me. like, yes, it is King Carino. My apologies. That's right. <laughs> Get it straight. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen to you. <laughs> oh, man. I just I just love hearing, though, how much uh, King Carino hates B.J. Whitmer's face. Well, to be fair, I think that this I think this was supposed to be Red Dragon, which I'm assuming Bobby Fish is either injured or some other reason he's not here, because I know for a fact that uh, Adam Page was not advertised for this show, and I freaking love him though, so I'm glad that he's here. The KRD, well, at least uh, two thirds of it, the ROH World Tag Team Champions, Daniels and Kazarian. They're still calling them the addiction, for what it's worth. Well, the addiction. I'll be honest, dude. I never thought I'd see these guys as ROH World Tag Team Champions. I knew they were together a long time. They were one of the best acts in TNA. Yeah, um, I didn't think that they would be either. I feel like ROH has always been sort of a, a promotion for the young. And these guys are anything but. Especially Daniels. Daniels is 45 freaking years old. Right. Like, you would never know it just to look at him. Oh, absolutely not. In fact, I was a little stunned when you said it, but uh, <laughs> uh, they, they wear their ROH World Tag Team titles. It's kind of like an Eminem throwback when I see them wearing it like that. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Who do you got in this match, Ashton? I, I usually like to ask after some matchups, you know, who you think um, Well, I don't know who's going to win, but I know that the decade is eating the pin. <laughs> <laughs> I think my official prediction, I'm going to just say RPG Vice wins. Ah, Rapungi Vice. Interesting. I'm going to go with our ROH World Tag Team Champions. I'm going to say the Addiction wins this thing. Glad to see that uh, Christopher Daniels traded in uh, the Apple Teeny for Tag Team Gold. Yeah, because... I just can't get over, I just can't get over that that guy used to... Yeah, exactly. I can't get over that he used to just bring Apple Teenies to the ring with him as part of his entrance. Like, what he the heck are you? Curry, man. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know... The heck are you, Zach Braff, with you and your Apple Teenies? Jesus. Wait, what? Uh, that was a that was a very obscure Scrubs reference. Anybody who got it, plus five to you, and, and no, you can't cash it in for anything, for the record. <laughs> but uh, it, they're awesome points. You don't need to cash it in for anything. You <laughs> exactly. See, there you go. Ashton gets it. Yeah, I've done that before. I don't think I've ever given as many as five away at once. But now here's the code of honor. <laughs> they just blow off the addiction. Screw you guys. Uh, Actually, I think what it was was they ain't gonna shake our hands. Why even by bother trying? Exactly. Adam Page starting things off, baby. He's so good. It's gonna be exciting to see Adam Page. I mean, again, I, I've said that really. I was a fan of his, not not just from a uh, in ring standpoint, but re really creatively how he's been used. I thought it was just gonna be that tired old trope, you know, a baby face in an abusive system and. They, they rise against it, but no, he, he, he turned heel. He's like, you know what? Yeah, I learned a lot of good things. I'm sticking Aww, around. Oh, Daniels, I wanted to see Adam Page. Of course, the old guy steals the young guy's limelight. Oh, it wasn't Daniels. It was Kazarian. But still, not as old, but still quite the difference. Yeah, really. <laughs> I used to be a big Kazarian fan. I know you know that. Uh, yeah. I, I miss when he had long hair and he looked like Antonio Banderas. Yeah, he had long hair. He had one of my favorite TNA themes. I just love the whole packaging of Kazarian and that flux capacitor, though. What was that? What was his name back then? Just Kaz. No, I, before, he had a different name before Kazarian, didn't he? Um, well, I, I know it used to be like Frankie Kazarian before I think it just became I thought, like... Kazarian. I thought he used to have a different name back when he was in a tag no. team with Michael Shane. Not that I remember, no. I'm doing Google right now. And, uh... I first got introduced to Kazarian when he was a part of Raven's TNA faction, Serotonin. Oh, wow. Um, That's going back. Yeah. Look at me with the references. Um, what is that, like 2003, 2004? Yeah, that's pretty late on. Yeah, I'd say just about. Good Lord. And there, and it's great to see Trent Beretta, too, for the record. And, uh, and yeah, you're right. He was never known as anything other than Frankie Kazarian and different variations of that. Although he was suicide for a while. That is true. That is true. Now you see Kazarian there. Kick it to the gut of Trent Beretta. I feel like, wasn't wasn't he a tag team with Michael Shane for a while? Who, Trent Beretta? No, no. Uh, Kazarian. Kazarian. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to say no, now that I personally remember. And again, uh, Trent Beretta, 
uh, pulling a Matt Taven here, seeking comfort from his tag team partner, and Rocky Romero takes the tag. Oh my God! All of Michael Shane's different freaking names: Matt Bentley, Michael Shane, Maverick Matt. Just hilarious. Now you see, uh, back when I first got into TNA, I thought that he was related to Shawn Michaels. You know what? I, I, I probably would have thought the same thing. I don't blame you. <laughs> and now Rocky Romero is taking cover from Trent Beretta. And now both of these guys, they got to get it together, man. Rapunky Vice was the team that you picked to potentially win this thing. I still think they will. Rocky I mean, Romero any, just needs to get ahead of steam, man. I mean, any team that bothers to comfort each other during the match clearly is the best teamwork. Oh, you know why I thought that Kazarian and Michael Shane were a tag team? Why is that? Because in 2003, they were co-X Division champions. Oh, I did not know that. They were declared co-champions after defeating AJ Styles in an Ultimate X match. They grabbed the belt at the same time. Yeah, very interesting. Did yeah. not know that. I freaking knew that they were somehow connected. I just didn't remember how. That's funny. Now you see there, Rapungi Vice is probably going to get the first real big double-team maneuver of this match. Both shoot off the ropes. Nice knees there. And then there's the clothesline by Trent Beretta. Beautiful. I love Rocky Romero's tag team work. Absolutely. And I honestly, like as much as I like um, Alex Kozlov, I think Trent is a better partner for him. Oh, yeah. Trent Beretta is insane. I mean, much respect to Alex Kozlov, and you know, especially now that he's retired and everything. But I do have to agree. I think they're such a great fit. And I'll look at Adam Page with the aggressive, just just rakes there. That's him, man. That's his character. <sighs> nice corner forearm. By oh, Trent but he just got again. whacked. Snaps back, beautiful by Trent Beretta. And now again, Rapungi Vice. Controlling the matchup here, controlling the pace. Here's another double team, and there's a nice chest and kick. Moon and then moonsault salt there by Beretta. Cover, two, and of course Adam Page kicks out. But now Daniels tries to come in and double arm drag there. There's a chest kick there. Another there's moon a moonsault salt there. Who else wants some? Asks yeah, really. Funky Vice. Oh, and now hmm. Adam Page. These guys are killing it. And now the decade may be able to take control. They have Rocky Romero isolated in the corner. Oh, you know what? I'm reading here. Um, Alex Kozlov didn't necessarily retire. He just took an indefinite sabbatical from pro wrestling. Oh, uh, okay. Hey, you know, sometimes it's what you need to do, man, to get back on track, recharge your batteries, and come back better than ever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I respect him for it. I mean, better that Everyone than hates B.J. Whitmer. Whitmer. He might be the best heel in this company. Like, it's between him and Silas Young. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I caught that. Oh, and look at that. Duck the Instagram. Oh, but he oh my he God. Rocky, Rocky Ro freaking Romero, man. He's so good. Rocky in comes Daniels. But he gets caught in the drop toe hold. Yeah, that, uh, that tag was really helpful. That, uh, Rocky Romero there with the arm ringer and then takes Daniels down. Lifts him up in a seated kick. position. There's yep. the drop kick. Rapungi Vice, yeah, you weren't joking. Their teamwork, so legit. And now Moretta Fred, uh, is about to do some kind of a slingshot thing, maybe. Yeah. Oh, he's going back and forth. I remember this. He was doing this before in PWG too. Better not be posturing too long here. And he and oh oh uh, oh, uh, there we go. Brilliant. Nice uh, nice stomp there. Yeah. You know, the addiction, you know, used to be so proud of their uh, their trickery and their douchebaggery, but Trent Beretta's taking him to school here, specifically Christopher Daniels, and Christopher Daniels calling for timeout. I don't know where he thinks he is. This is pro wrestling. This is Ring of Honor. There are no timeouts. And it's a little late for the Code of Honor as Trent Beretta answers with hard chops to the chest. Christopher Daniels shoot Beretta off the ropes, and there's Kazarian there with a the kick, but it doesn't matter because he gets a form to the face. Oh, Daniels tries to capitalize, but Beretta again keeps him at bay, and there are more chops to the chest. Beretta is on fire, and all oh. there's Kazarian. Yeah, he's on fire because that's burning pain. Exactly. And there's a moonsault <laughs> to the back. Ugh. And that's the one thing I can't take away from the addiction. These guys, they know how to gain an edge when they want it bad enough, and the really great tag teams, they make it seem like wrestling two guys is like wrestling five guys. It always makes it seem like a man is everywhere you look, and Kazarian grabbing that leg of Trent Beretta was the difference maker. 
But no, no further than the shield, right? Oh, absolutely. Shield perfected it. Shield perfected it. And there's the double stop there by Kazarian. Tremperetta now is going to have to get to some friendly place, and the only friendly place would be to Rocky Romero, because I guarantee you the decade probably doesn't want to touch hands with Tremperetta. Yeah, no kidding. And so you got to figure, too. I mean, the addiction has no problem stealing tags, but you got to imagine they're only going to want to make tags to each other, as are... I still know, feel like... I, I still feel like Adam Page hasn't been in this match enough. BJ Whitmer hasn't, hasn't been in this match at all, but no one's complaining about that. Right. And, oh, look at... Oh, man. Daniel's driving Beretta, driving the air out of him into the canvas. Yep. Beretta's still able to kick out. And Daniel's got to be feeling so confident. Oh, could it be Angel's wings? Looks like he wants it, but he's not going to get it. Uh, BJ Whitmer just tagged himself in, finally. And there we go. Now look at that. Even though Tremperetta was kind of looking for some uh, some reprieve, he isn't going to find it because they tagged in Christopher Daniels, not Tremperetta. Yep. And so Tremperetta is stuck here. And this is a nice back suplex there by B.J. Whitmer. See, he really is the heel. We wanted more of Adam Page. You get B.J. Whitmer. Yeah, yeah, really. I'll tell you, he probably has the most punchable face in pro wrestling. And this is... Well, I mean, you know, with Miz, it's like he, he's really just a douche. And B.J. Whitmer is a douche, too. But that face, man, I just <laughs> want to ball up your fist and just go to town on that face. So there, I absolutely understand King Carino's frustration. <laughs> and uh, Trump right now fighting back. Chops and forearms, chops and forearms. But, oh, look at B.J. Whitmer with the follow through. And then he tosses uh, Tremperetta through the ropes. Yeah. Now look at Adam Page here. Adam Page, baby. Beautiful. That so, oh, that was like a shooting star almost. Yeah, almost like a shooting star off the apron. And then he gets Tremperetta back in the ring. Adam Page. And oh, that's not enough. Truly a beast. I would not be opposed to the decade winning this match, potentially putting themselves in line for an ROH World Tag Team title opportunity because Adam Page is really something. I think we're about to see more of him here. Every That's time you say the name Adam, I'm thinking you're just going to scream, Adam Cole, baby! I have no idea how bad I want to, but it's not even appropriate <laughs> if he's not on this card. <laughs> I know, it's such a shame. I mean, this audience doesn't deserve it anyway, because, I mean, have you seen them? But that's not the point. <laughs> oh, man. And Christopher Dan, are you serious? Are we ever going to get to see Adam Page in this match? Like, really? Punch him. For Daniel's lecture. Oh, man. that's going to piss him off. Oh, man. I think BJ Wimmer knows it, too. He's just kind of looking at Daniel's like, dude, thanks for doing my work for me and firing him up. <laughs> oh, now he just face Bob. Wow. Oh, boy. Wow. Daniel's trying to calm the situation down. This is <laughs> <They're great>. going, <laughs> a kick to the gut. Oh, Angel's wings. Nope. Back body <laughs> drop. Oh, man. Oh, no. look at that. School oh, boy. No. Oh, Adam Rage rolled through. Oh, Adam Page it's off like the It's like a really, really good match in WWE 2K15. Everything is getting countered. Exactly. And there's Trump right in there with a stomp on That was brutal looking. I love Christopher Daniels earlier. He's like, okay, now I know tensions are high. Kick! <laughs> yeah. And here comes nice Rocky Romero. Oh, because ain't trying to stop it. Good luck. Rocky Romero nice. snap for a Kanana. Nice. Kanana. Beautiful, and now the addiction. They're not in a good place. Rocky Romero. Close lines! Oh, yes! Man. There's one. Daniels. There's a drop kick to Kazarian. Nice. Kazarian's going to the other corner. Now Rocky Romero. Oh, now he's going to get both of them. Man. Yes! There's one. One. Two. two. I think he does five. Three. Three. Four. Four. Oh, he's going to do... No, he's not going to... Oh, Daniels, look at that. Oh, there Double it is. Double close line. That's six. Screw it. Oh, uh, Romero is pumped. He's so good when he gets momentum. He's feeling it, man. He's feeling it. Oh, look at that slice bread number slice two, bread. maybe? Nope. Oh, look at that brilliant counter by the addiction. But look uh -huh. at Beretta there. That was a brilliant counter by the addiction. By specifically Kazarian. Exactly. Oh, the double knees to the face. That was smart. But Rapunky Vice has showed up, man. They're so good. Well, that's why they're oh. freaking... I think, I'm pretty sure they're the New Japan Junior Heavyweight Champions, dude. I didn't see them come out with any belts. I mean, we saw the Kingdom earlier come out with their IWGP titles, so I don't remember Punky Vice wearing any gold. That's true. 
but oh, I'll, I could have sworn that they were the IWGP. Oh, uh, this could get rough. Rocky Romero paint, trapped like, here. Kills him. Oh, oh, but right again saves him. You gotta give credit to Trent Oh, I love matches. Rocky He's, Romero. Uh, Rocky Romero, look at that psyching out BJ Whitmer, beautiful. He's but you so gotta. I was, I was going to say, you got to give credit to Trent Beretta. He has given such great coverage for Romero in this yeah. match. Just really awesome. Every time I think Romero's in peril, there Trent Beretta is to make the save. And now Trent Beretta's about to... Oh, oh no, no! Kazarian put a stop to it. Wow. Dude, this match is crazy. Everyone's reversing everything. This match is broken down, and now Rocky Romero is not in a good place. Both members of the addiction in the ring... Oh, you know what? I'm seeing here the current IWGP Junior Tag Champs are actually the Young Bucks. I guess they won it from RPG Vice recently. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure RPG Vice were just the, the champions, like, recently. Right, right. Oh, Daniels now may be calling for the end of it. The, the Uranagi. Oh, no! Arm drag! Oh, but BJ Whitmer steals the tag. Beautiful stolen tag there by the decade. Specifically, BJ Whitmer. And now Adam Page and BJ Whitmer are putting the boots to rock. Yeah, dude! RPG Vice only held the titles for 28 days. Wow. <laughs> April 5th to May 3rd. I mean, you know, it, it's crazy. Just thinking about oh, it. I love that God. move so much. That is easily my favorite move in oh, Adam Oh, Rocky Romero somehow awesome. kicked out. I'll tell you, it's gotten to the point where I could buy any of these teams winning. That's how much it's broken down. One exploder T-bone there by BJ Whitmer. Oh, but now Trent Beretta there with the Enziguri. Brilliant Enziguri. And great sell, too, by B.J. Whitmer. Can I just say that? I know that it's the popular thing to just shit on B.J. Whitmer all day, but the punchable face, the heel tactics, the selling, he's really good. Oh, absolutely. And Adam Page, man. Adam Page is so good. Look at that uppercut, though, by Daniels. And then Rocky and Romero the with the knee. And the face. Dude, Rocky Romero. Oh, they took each other out with the clotheslines. You'd think Rocky Romero would have the advantage there because he's kind of the clothesline guy, but I guess not. Bodies are strewn all across this ring. Who is going to get a foothold in this matchup? John Who's just said there? strewn. <laughs> hey, you always get a nice vocabulary lesson. You get a lot of weird educational lessons on TwitWow, so. Hey, we're not just a wrestling podcast. Yeah, exactly. You know We are, but we also do other stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, this program that was should be provided- our tagline. I mean, you know, we're like PBS. This program is sponsored by viewers like you. So there you go. <laughs> oh, what is this going to be? Alabama Slam, maybe? I'll tell you what it is. Oh, the Stolten tag was made, though. Trent oh, and Hurricane Rana. Yeah, Trent Beretta did make that tag. And now he oh, the sick it. kick. Oh, the sick kick there by Trent Beretta. Holy crap. This could be Rapungi Vice's time, dude. Oh, he's got him up. Oh, my God. There it is. Oh, but look, no. Daniel's right no there. Even tagged, not even a one count. Oh, man. And the addiction's going to steal this one. And yeah, they, they did. did. Wow. I, Rapungi Vice had it, but the addiction just had the wherewithal to take advantage. That was genius. I got to give the addiction credit. Those heel tactics, though. I think I picked the addiction to win. I said the R. Yeah, you did. Have- you totally did. You said them. I said RPG Vice. But you uh, did say the, you did say the Adam team. Cole. Oh. That's not Adam Cole, is it? Who was that? Was that Roddy Strong or not Roddy Strong? Uh, Kyle O'Reilly. It may have been Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah. His yeah, it is team. O'Reilly. Yeah, I'm excited. Oh, dude, he's there. gonna be the ROH champion soon. I feel it. Oh man. As soon as he and Bobby Fish break up, he is headed straight for that world title. You think he could beat Jay Briscoe for it? I think that if anybody could beat Jay Briscoe for it, not named. Well, I shouldn't say not name, not like above, like the, the Samoa Joe, AJ Styles type, somebody right. that's actually like kind of from within that hasn't been bigger and outside of ROH yet. It's got to be O'Reilly. It's got to. I mean, Champa tried and he couldn't do it. Mike Bennett hasn't gotten an opportunity. I don't know. It's <sighs> why did Kevin Steen's face just show up on the Titantron? That was weird. I don't know. Did you see that? Yeah, there I, he is again. I saw it again. Yeah. What the heck? Oh, they're next? showing they're showing highlights of Nakamura from last year against Steam. Oh, uh, okay. So is his match with ACH coming up next then? It must be. Oh man, Nakamura Shinsuke. Well, I don't. I I kind of doubt that this announcer is going to do that, but yeah. 
just wanted to do it. I just wanted to give our listeners something. You know? No, that was great. You did it way better than I imagine the actual commentators are going to do it. Or the actual- I, I appreciate that, man. I really wanted to try. I'm like, I, I'm contemplating it. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go for it. Go yeah, for that it. was good. I'm, I'm proud of you. Nakamura was worth all the effort. He is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you've been a big fan of his for really a long time, ever since I've known that you, you know, you pay attention to the Japanese wrestling scene. Well, dude, the match that they're showing right now, Okada, or, um, Steen versus Nakamura, that was the match that introduced me to him, and I instantly was like, okay, I need to look more into this guy, and I found a bunch of stuff on YouTube and fell in love. And see, his match with Kota Ibushi just convinced me, yeah, he... Okay, just... so I've got, I've got like a seven-month advantage on you when it comes to Nakamura, maybe eight months. Yeah, I know you showed me like like a match too, like along there, but I think it was that match with Ibushi that made me say, yeah, Nakamura is the real deal. Yeah, this guy is a superstar in every sense of the word. I I love the personality, I love the move set, I love the theme. Yeah, oh, his uh, theme song is so good. I jam out to that while I work something. You know what? I I I listen to that song too, and you know I don't say this in a bad way because you know I'm a huge fan of this anime. It reminds me of like a Dragon Ball Z victory theme. Like, the villain just got slayed. Or even, even like, a DBZ intro theme. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. It's just like, guys, Majin Buu's finally dead. I mean, sure, half the human population got devastated, but we <laughs> won, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Are we all so happy that death has absolutely zero consequence in this universe? Yeah, I gotta tell you something about the Dragon Balls and GT. Yeah, yeah, not, not now. We won, guys! Dude. See, that right there, though, like, everyone shits on GT. That's why I liked it, because it proved that there are consequences for using the Dragon Balls, and you, there is a consequence to death and, and needing to use the Dragon Balls to make death not have a consequence. Like, I love that. And that's the only thing I think I'll ever give GT credit for, is that they actually Oh, see, I liked, I liked just about... I, I, I'm one of the very few GT apologists, I think. You know what, though? I am intrigued by the new Dragon Ball series that's coming. Have you heard about oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Dragon Ball, or is it actually playing off the, the Dragon Ball Z? See, I... I because I was not a big fan of the original Dragon Ball series. Like, it wasn't horrible, but it feels like... It, it felt like it was more comedy fantasy, whereas DBZ is pure, like, drama, action, everything. Yeah. It takes itself uh, the, a lot the only enjoyable, Yeah, the only enjoyable part for me of the original Dragon Ball, if you want the truth, when I was watching it as a kid, was the whole Master Roshi versus Kid Goku at the World Martial Arts Tournament. That whole arc oh, yeah. was... It, it was a really well done battle, you know, for anime. But yeah, I think it's actually the new series. Getting back to that, it's actually called Dragon Ball Super, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. And I, I don't, I don't know what it's going to be based on, but man, like, I'm excited. Their movies have been doing pretty well. I even heard in their most recent movie that Vegeta may have even been the protagonist, which you know is a huge time Vegeta mark. I could say about freaking time. Uh, I will but... never understand that appeal. Seriously, and, and I've fallen in love with them all over again thanks to you know Team Four, Four Star and oh, Bridge because that is just course. oh my god the Cell Saga right now, uh, <laughs> so good. By that's the way, another thing that I could never really get into. I mean, I don't dislike it. I just no, no, no never, never. I, I think, I, I think you would you would appreciate it though because I think they made some jokes that sometimes I do think about. You like, oh yeah, I should appreciate that one. Like they just did an episode recently where Cell achieved his semi perfect form and they did a Pokemon joke at the end. Like what? Imperfect Cell is evolving. Imperfect cells become semi-perfect cells. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Well, guys, we just have a Global Wars kind of uh, graphic right now, so we're going to cut off the recording and we'll be back when the actual show resumes. Here we go, guys. We're back, and it looks like we might be starting maybe possibly things off with Nakamura ACH. I don't know. Hopefully, possibly, please. Yeah, I, I'm so excited for this matchup. I feel like this is going to run away with Match of the Night, at least for the time being. Let's see what these two guys can do. Oh, yeah. God, just seeing the graphic makes my spine tingle. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. I hope we get some Stone Cold ACH in this match, too. You know, it's funny, because I was going to ask you, actually, while entrances were in progress... You think we're going to see ACH try and imitate Nakamura a little bit with the knee strikes oh, yeah, and whatnot? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's going to be insane. He's going to do the corner tremble. He's going to do Yeah, he's going to do some of, the, some of Nakamura's sort of signature offense for sure. Because you told me when we saw ACH versus uh, AJ Styles a little while back that ACH imitates people he greatly respects, and that's just kind of what it is for ACH. It's not only really so much a cocky, arrogant heel thing. 
It's just, you know. Oh, God, he's so oh, wow. good. Even his entrance is amazing. ACH, man. How is he getting so few streamers? I'll tell you why. Because of who he's freaking going against. Exactly. All the streamers are for Nakamura. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what it's going to be. The ring is literally just going to look like a flood of color. Oh, the King of Strong style. He really is, too. Oh, man. That flute sound that starts his theme music just gets gives me shivers, man. Shinsuke Nakamura is a beast. I mean, Ashton God. introduced me to him. I fell in love with him at Wrestle Kingdom 9. If any of you haven't seen Shinsuke Nakamura, I have to ask, with all due respect, what in the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I just have to ask, with all due respect, what in the hell is wrong with WWE for not offering this guy a six-figure contract to come and wrestle everyone in their company? Yeah, really? Oh, man. You know, I, I, I just love it. I love everything just about this guy. Just the energy. Again, he has such a great look. Oh, my God. All those streamers. All the streamers. That's more. Oh, of- my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's not as much as apparently he got on the first night of War of the Worlds, though, this year. Because apparently that first night of War of the Worlds, like, literally you couldn't walk in the ring without kicking streamers. I mean, Ashton, let me put it to you this way. You and I were fanboying pretty hard over Nakamura just now, but if we're going by streamers, that whole audience just blew their load. Yeah, yeah, they did. They really did. Holy crap. I'm hearing ACH between the Nakamuras, though. It's not completely one-sided, just mostly one-sided. You'd probably say it's like 90 Nakamura Timbers and ACH, worst 80%. Uh, yeah, I was going to say 85-15, actually. <laughs> and there is the code of honor being honored by both men. ACH <laughs> doesn't know how to act. How, how do you know how to act with Nakamura? This guy, well, that's I'm the thing, saying... he's just so bizarre and nonchalant about how bizarre he is. It's brilliant. And that's the thing, like, I wouldn't even say necessarily, even though I'm sure those are traits you could apply, that Nakamura is necessarily like... This oh, wow, look at that reach advantage. Dude, his reach advantage is massive in this match. He's got such long arms and legs compared to everyone. Yeah, his legs are ridiculously long, now that you mention it. Like, I, I forgot just how long they were, but no wonder his knee strikes are so potent. You know, unless your name's Tanahashi, piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he's beaten Tanahashi before. Well, that's good. You know what I call that? I call that justice. That's what I call that. <laughs> But ACH. He and know. Tanahashi actually main evented Wrestle Kingdom 8 for the Intercontinental Championship, and Nakamura retained. Let me ask you, dude, because you seem to have your finger on the pulse of all recent happenings. You know you're far more worldly that kind of stuff than I am. Is Nakamura still the Intercontinental Champion, or did he lose? No, I think he recently lost it, actually. To who? Do you know who? I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. But I well, feel like I remember seeing that he lost it to somebody. Well, I mean, you know, for, former Intercontinental Champion, I mean, Nakamura is a huge deal. ACA, I mean, this is a huge matchup for ACH. So we'll see if he can, uh, if he has the good I feel like he lost it to someone in Bullet Club. That wouldn't surprise me, actually, if that was the Maybe case. Maybe Gallows? Maybe, oh no, uh, Hiroki Goto. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he held it for a really long time, though. He held it for 92 days before losing it. Or no. Hang on, I looked at the wrong thing. Uh, he held it for 224 days before losing it. And see, that's what I mean. Nakamura had a dominant reign as Intercontinental Champion. And you see, he just kind of got in the head of ACH a little bit. ACH looking a little flabbergasted because Nakamura covering ACH's eyes earlier, kind of playing a little hide-and-seek. Well, the crazy thing is, dude, since the inception of the Intercontinental Championship, Nakamura has held the title for more combined days than anybody else, everybody else combined. That's crazy. Yeah, he's held it for almost 800 days, and I don't think that the other reigns add up to 500 even. Wow. So really, we could call Nakamura for the moment the greatest Intercontinental Champion that New Japan has had. I would know? call him the greatest person that I just, <laughs> that they've ever had. The greatest performer, I don't know, like, the greatest everything. I can't think of something that I, he's, I, he's, I, he's I, even the best dancer in New Japan, for God's sakes. I, I love your fandom for Nakamura so much. It's a joy to behold. Screw you, funky weapon. Oh, oh wow. ACH doing the disco fever. <laughs> Pulling out some Michael Jackson. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Nakamura appreciates the Michael Jackson, though. He's a big fan. Nakamura is just so strange. 
Like, how, how oh, do he's you... reaching out for a handshake. Oh, okay, ACH. Oh, okay. There it is. Oh, oh he caught oh, it. Oh, ACH came to play tonight. Yes, oh, he did. Nice take down there. You know, I was going to ask the question. Oh, and he ducks it. Wow. Oh, drop what kick. a drop kick. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love ACH. <laughs> I was going to say, how do you... How do you prepare for the crazy that is Shinsuke Nakamura? But I think ACH is trying to out-crazy him here. I think he is, too. I love it. Oh, I love ACH so much. Oh, man. Oh, but look oh, at that knee there. Yeah, that the Shinsuke's knee-based offense. Oh, and he's kicking him, and he's kicking him in his head. I, he, did see, that to, he did that to Ibushi, too, and Ibushi really did not respond well. Uh, oh, the corner tremble. Already? Is it coming on? No! No, he oh! caught him again! Are you serious? ACH coming to play the smack knife edge chop. That special beam cannon knife edge chop there. Is that what that was? Yeah, because I, I know he did like the two fingers to the head press stuff. That's how oh, I didn't even catch that. Go. That's awesome. Oh, wow. What a slap. Oh, but that's oh just... Nakamura had it scouted. Beautiful. Oh, my God, dude. They have each other scouted out so well. And see, that's the thing I want people to know about Shinsuke Nakamura, is that even though the guy is crazier than a pet coon, to quote the good old JR, when he gets serious, nobody is more vicious. Oh, than he's going to do a knee. Oh, my oh, God. And see, that's oh. what I'm talking about. That vicious tree of Nakamura. And now he takes ACH back in. Now he's going to put him back in the ring. And we're going to get another knee. Here we go. Another oh knee lift. Oh, God. He is sadistic. Here it comes. And oh, oh, my God. God. He put all of his weight into that one. He really did. Oh, and the oh. knee to the back of the head. Are you kidding me? Poor ACH. To say his knee strikes possess proficiency would be the grossest understatement my tongue could conceivably utter on these live reactions. <laughs> Devastation at its finest. Yeah. Whew. You know, in PWG... Oh, that's right! Dalton Castle's performing tonight! Oh, that that's definitely going to be something to look forward to. But what I was getting ready to say was, in PWG, there's a chant for Chris Hero that goes, Chris Hero ain't no one to fuck with. But I, I think that belongs to Shinsuke Nakamura. I, yeah. I take my chances with Chris Hero, in all honesty, before Shinsuke That's Nakamura. a match I would pay to see. Nakamura versus Chris Hero? Good God, dude, don't even joke. The, the amount of no-selling that would happen in that match would literally explode brains. The no-selling and the brawling just between the knees and the forearm. The strikes, yeah. The strikes, good Lord. And now this is this is looking a hell of a lot like Nakamura versus Ibushi at Wrestle Kingdom 9. ACH is in a bad way. No, Ibushi put up a hell of a big, lot more fight than... Oh, the, yeah, he did. But I, I'm expecting the same fight later on in ACH. I'm not counting him out. There it is, the quarter time. Dude, the entire arena is freaking shaking right now. Oh, ACH! And drop that's kick. the drop kick! Oh, but he stunned himself there, too. Yeah, I mean, he's holding the back of that head. I, I don't even know. It kind of even looked like his leg may have looked a little weird, but he's got to try and capitalize on this if he can. Stone Cold ACH! Stone, Stone Cold ACH! ACH. Oh, no, man. Stone Cold Punch. That's an ACH punch. He may, he, he may have to pull out the Stone Cold, the Raw, Hulk those Hogan, already, everybody. Yeah, those aren't just, even punches. Those are just straight forearms. Just to survive Shinsuke Nakamura, let alone win. Oh, oh, I the love the spacing with ACH. He saw Nakamura coming towards him, and he immediately runs away into the turnbuckle, and now he's just firing off kicks. And I love the kicks between the upper arm and the lower leg, the alternations of the kicks. Oh, now Nakamura. And the oh, oh, there ACH. it is! He in front of him. Oh, wow. man. What, what a, a lariat! Line. That was a lariat, my friend. He threw that. Yeah, he leaned into that. Yeah. Good God. He looks so much like Wayne Brady right now. <laughs> Tell me he doesn't. He he does. <laughs> oh, man. Nakamura, though. I never thought I'd... Oh, those nice knife, knife edge chops, man. Jesus. Yeah, devil. I mean, he's got dueling chance. Yeah, I mean, this crowd loves both of these guys. Oh, Dusty oh. Kamora kept it going. He doesn't even bother making it look pretty with the spin around Inzagiri. He just uses the, the whatever leg gets there fastest. Exactly. I love it. 
He's a man of efficiency. He doesn't get paid by the hour. He really doesn't. He's so good. If he did get paid by the hour, though, he'd still be getting paid a lot because his matches are almost all amazing and long. <laughs> There's a nice shot there by Nagamora. Now I feel like these two guys, who's going to gain the edge here? Oh, bring it. Come on. You can hit harder than that, ACH. Oh, oh he once. might have been happy with that one. I don't know. I don't know. Nakamura wants a fight, and I think ACH is happy to oblige. Here we go. It's broken down. Forearms left and right between these two. It's funny. I watched an older... Oh, that power. I watched wow. an older Nakamura match earlier today, and he has changed so much since back then. And now he's I, got ACH there in the corner, takes him to the other corner. Yeah, you figure Nakamura has been wrestling since 2002. I watched a 2006 match that he had against Brock Lesnar in New Japan. And oh, wow. it was only about a nine-minute match, and he was good as far as, like, psychology goes, but he's just on such a different level now. Oh, my God, it's not even close. Cover here, and ACH kicks out. That's a 2015 match that I'd pay money to see, is Nakamura versus Lesnar. Good Lord. Oh, my God. I know, right? I mean, if anybody could stun Lesnar and potentially take him down with the with strikes, it'd be yeah. Nakamura with those knees. and Oh, oh ACH is here. reversing this. Oh, he's ACH stuffing it as best as he can. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh him up. Stunner. stunner. And he got it. Wow. I'm actually shocked he hit it. Wow. Nakamura is stunned. Pun fully intended. Oh, man. ACH is getting ready for something. He's feeling pumped. Yep. I wonder if he's as shocked as the rest of us. Deadlift German. Deadlift German. Uh -oh. He's he trying wants it. He Not wants it. it. Oh, come on. Nakamura, Deadlift, no. Vert. Switches over. Suplex. No, no Nakamura counters Nakamura. again. No. No. Vert, no. No, no one's doing help. anything. Nobody's giving any give. No. No. Oh, they keep getting higher and higher, but no one's landing anything. Oh, man. Oh, oh my no, God. No. And Nakamura's Nakamura like, screw just this. Says, yeah, let's end this. And then guts to the face. There's or the gut just... there. And, oh, there That's it is. That's more like it. There you go. He's not He's not going to let you pick him up all the way. You just throw him back down. Yeah, Nakamura. Oh, it looked almost like he wanted the Boma Yay. Oh. Oh, missed it. Barely avoided that devastation, ACH. Oh, I wonder if ACH is going to kick out of one... Oh, right. beautiful. Yeah. Two. Oh, ho, ho. he got a two count on Nakamura. That's like Paul Heyman. You got a two count on the champ. <laughs> you got a two count on the champ. You got a two count on the champ. One more and it's three. I can't Paul breathe. Heyman. You can't fight. I really do. Double stun on the back of the head. Beautiful by ACH2. And there's the kick out. Oh, man. I feel like everyone's forgotten about Paul Heyman, but I miss him. I miss him so much. I went outside in uh, my Paul Heyman, I, I'm a Paul Heyman guy shirt yesterday and just felt empty without him actually being a part of the product anymore. I love you even more than I already do knowing that you have that shirt and that's a terrifying assertion for me to make. Oh yeah, I totally have it. And now you see Nakamura is on the apron. But that, oh. reach, that reach trying to use it, but ACH ducked with a drop kick. ACH is going to do some kind of retarded high flying maneuver right now. My God, I wonder no. if I wonder if Nakamura is gonna clock him one before he gets a chance to, or like move the rope when he steps on it, because you know he's gonna go for the step over. I'm, I'm Nakamura. I'd, I'd expose that ring apron. Yep. Didn't get the chance to, because ACH gets the maneuver off. Nailed it. Beautiful. That is such a cool looking move. I'd love to know how he freaking does that, because that's that like defies the laws of physics. Like he's running towards the rope and he stops his momentum with one foot. But then he uses that momentum and redirects it from forward to upward and goes up over the road. Like, I don't get it. Right. Like, physically, how is that possible? <laughs> just to understand the mechanics of a maneuver like that. Uh, it's just mind-boggling. As he gets Nakamura back in the ring here, ACH has a... ACH is taking it to Shinsuke, man. Yeah, he is. I mean, I, I said earlier when we were talking about the Kota Ibushi bout that ACH is going to bring the fight. Oh, knock oh, here comes the name. There's the Boma there Yay. It it's over. Not, no, not covering him, though. He's not covering him. He's going to kick out of the first one. Oh, he's got to be spent. If he even gets a cover. I think he, 
he's stirring. Yeah. I didn't know how spent Shinsuke Nakamura was from ACH's offense, but he It is. says something about about ACH, though, that he's not even with it enough to get off his back, to get his shoulders off the ground before the pin. Yeah. He's got to be so spent. Oh, my God. Because that's, that's an instinct that guys develop, is to roll over onto their stomachs. What yeah. do you even call that? Wow. It's like a suplex drop of sorts. I don't know. And now I think he's calling for another knee. Yeah, he wants another Boma Ye. Oh, he's trembling here. He's feeling it. Oh, oh he's, he's what was it. that? Oh, oh God, God, it's oh over. Oh, my That's God. It. it is over. Two, there three count. Oh, my God. See, now, you know what? As much as I absolutely loved that match, I don't even know if I would call that match of the night. I don't know, man. Not yet, at least. Not so far, I mean. Right. Because the, the triple threat, dude, was just so good. Yeah, it was. But that knee, though, just exploded. That was like an RKO-esque knee. Just came out of nowhere. I, mean, I want him in yeah. WWE so bad. <laughs> Dude. The amount of dream matches possible with Shinsuke Nakamura in WWE. I want Nakamura versus Cena, Orton, Lesnar, Ziggler, Barrett, Brian when he comes back, Balor, Kenta, I forgot his real name, or his WWE name. Hideo uh, Tommy. Yeah, that guy. Uh, Neville, Zane, <laughs> like, uh, Steen, or Owens. Like, I, I want all the dream matches. I want to see Breeze sell that knee. Oh, Jesus. I just want to see Breeze look at Nakamura in awe, like, disgusted awe, and just be like, oh, my God, the ultimate uggo. You mean people like this uggo? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poor ACH, man. He gets put in all these matches with guys that are just a notch over his head. Oh, Lethal versus Naito. Oh, God. No, no, there are not going to be any Japanese fangirls in the crowd tonight. Thank Jesus. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Even with that aside, I think this is going to be first match. Even though I'm, I'm a huge fan of Jay Lethal. Like, I'm really actively rooting for him here. The other matches, I could have gone with either guy. No, Jay Lethal for the win here. Yeah, Naito, to me, is like the Kofi Kingston of New Japan. Like, he's good, and there's no denying that he's good, but there's just nothing about him that really makes me give a crap. Although, honestly, even though I still expect Jay Lethal to get the win, here's the thing, because this is a non-title match, it seems, I didn't see the World Television Championship being advertised to be on the line. I could see, for that reason, Naito getting a victory here. Yeah, I could see that, too. Ugh, Naito... You know what? It's not even him. It is the fans. I've got to learn to separate the two. I can't be annoyed at them. But those fangirls. Yeah, I mean, he's good. not bad. I, like I said, like he's the Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston. Everything you can say about Kofi Kingston, you could say about Naito. He's really good. He's exciting. He's a high flyer. He's, you know, he, he's a fan favorite. Everyone loves him. He's just not special in any way. He just, he just kind of blends in. He's very generic. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Jay Lethal, man, and frickin' Truth Martini. Good lord. You know, the funny thing about Jay Lethal, Ashton, and I've been meaning to say this the last few times we've seen him, it's so funny, because I remember when he was first starting out in TNA, and he was just like every other guy in the X Division, you know what I mean? Like, I think he was just the guy that put on great matches, but not really much else was going for him. And then you got Black Machismo, and then I learned the depth of this guy's charisma, and now seeing him work heel like this... I'm telling you, I know that Jay Briscoe has a monopoly on that world title right now, and I could actually see, ever since you said it earlier, about Kyle O'Reilly being the man to unseat him, but if Jay Lethal doesn't at least get a chance at that ROH world title soon, it's yeah. going to be a travesty. Yeah, that's true. Donovan Dijak, newest member of the House of Truth. Yeah. The thing was, the, the new prospect tournament, the winner got a shot at Jay Lethal, and when he had that opportunity... Truth Martini offered him a spot in the House of Truth if he chose to give up the opportunity, and he actually went with it. Interesting. So that may tell me that Donovan Dijak may end Jay Lethal's reign. They may build it up to where uh, Dijak just realizes he made a mistake, gets fed up with the House of Truth, and then he cashes in that match, and then he beats Jay Lethal, because that really does leave an open-ended question, like, would he have beaten Lethal? So, interesting uh, development there. Yeah. Oh, man. What's Jay up? Le 
Jay Lethal has been the ROH World Television Champion for, my God, I, I think he does have the longest reign in ROH, and I think he did surpass Matt Taven, his longest reigning champion. Oh, yeah, he has to have. Yeah, he, he, I, I just, honestly, the first time I see him without that championship, I'm going to think that he came out naked, because I think when a guy is champion for so long, you almost feel like it becomes a part of him, a part of the ring attire. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's what it's really gotten to with Jay Lethal and that television championship. Tetsuya Naito. Naito! <laughs> there we go. That'll be the only one that we hear all night. All right. That, that sounds good to me. <laughs> oh, I thought of another uh, Shinsuke Nakamura matchup I wanted to see. Nakamura versus Ambrose. I don't know why. Oh, well, yeah, because they're basically mirrors of each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That makes dear. the most sense, John. <laughs> And Jay Lethal, man, he is so in love with himself in that TV championship. I love it. And he has all the reason in the world to be. You know, though, I'm sad that we didn't see Truth Martini come out. I mean, first I don't get an NM Cole, and then I don't get any Truth Martini. Like, why is the world Anyway, right what now? the heck, man? What's going on? I know. What's up with that? Unless... Truth Martini and Adam Cole are collaborating on something awesome, which I doubt. Truth Martini. I love Truth Martini. He's so, so good. good. <laughs> we both said that. I know. <laughs> and now we're gonna we're gonna respect the code of honor here. <clears throat> Jay Lethal actually is the first one to initiate it here, much to my shock. But uh, Naito probably doesn't trust it. <laughs> Naito, you shake his hand and stop being so so. Yeah, Jay Lethal's like, get over yourself, shake my hand. Be a man, shake my hand. And there we go. That's the rhyme. And see, Jay Lethal wasn't even heelish about it. I like that. Oh, and well, there That's it is there. Like it. There it yeah. is. Just the immediate attack. I love it. <laughs> Oh, man. Jay Lethal. I mean, again, I, I talked about the early days I'd watched him in TNA where he just seemed like a you know, a young kid. I think I think he was only like 20, 24 at the time. And Dude, he's only like 27 or 28 now, isn't he? Really? He's not even in his 30s yet? That's crazy to think I, about. Let me look it up. We'll find out. You know, it could have been that he was 21 in TNA. You know, because, yeah, I mean, I he was... He Jay was Lethal, one... current age is 30. He just turned 30 in late April. Yeah, you know what? He was he was either 24 when I first saw him, or, or even 21, because he, he he was really young in TNA, and they even like that was kind of a talking point of his like. Well, how do you remember what year it was when you first saw oh, him? Oh God, it, uh, probably like 2005, I'd say 2005, 2006. Oh, yeah. Well, then, yeah, I mean it would make sense if he was 21, because you know he's he's only 30 now. Yeah, and it's 2015. But but to, you know see how, how much he's come. Along in those nine years, just unbelievable. For sure, for um, sure. It's kind of like what you were talking about with Shinsuke, you know, watching his. Uh, oh, dude, his he's stuff. completely changed everything about himself. Yeah, and then the same can certainly be said for Jay Lethal to to see this guy that is certainly an exceptional athlete on the one hand, but just oozes that kind of charisma, especially and knows how to get that heat on the other as a heel is just fantastic. And yeah. oh, nice back. It's just crazy to think about too, because he was never a heel in TNA. Yeah. Was never even asked to be one, from what I understand. Honestly, I feel like um, I was gonna say WWE. I feel like TNA really dropped the ball with Jay Lethal because I feel like that black uh, machismo gimmick could have gone so much further. I mean, how he even got a win over Kurt Angle with it for the X Division Championship. Oh wow! And, I didn't uh, even realize that. I I did not watch TNA at the time. The yeah. only the only time that, you know when I started watching TNA was when they started doing the the stupid freaking fake Monday Night Wars thing where they tried to be on Monday and it lasted for all of, like, what, one week? Yeah, dude, you, you missed TNA's glory years because I at least got to see... No, 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 I saw TNA from, like, the beginning up to 05. Right. So I missed, like, 06 to 2010, I think. Oh, all right, then. 
Because, yeah, I, I remember, like, yeah, I, I saw a bunch of stuff. And, yeah, Kurt Angle was actually a former X Division champion because he beat Samoa Joe in a matchup where the winner got all the titles in TNA. And Jay Lethal beat Kurt Angle in his first X Division championship match defense because the whole story was Kurt Angle was defending all of his belts in one night. And he lost the tag titles to Ron Killings and Pac Man Jones and the X Division oh, championship. Jesus. Yeah, I know. Oh, and, Pac Man Jones was actually a part of that. Yeah, I forgot about that. And uh, Jay Lethal. As Black Machismo beat Kurt Angle, I thought that was going to be the start of big things for for Jay Lethal, you know, a potential main event spot. But now that he's an ROH, you know, a wrestling company that actually seems to respect its roster and you know give them something to do and pay them on time, I would hope. Yeah, that's anyway, kind of important. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, I just think sort this, of. yeah, I just feel like the sky's the limit for Jay Lethal now, and I'm so happy for him. And he needs to win this too. Oh yeah, I, I will be pissed honestly if Naito were to get the win here. I mean, non-title or not, you know, whatever the case is, I feel like Jay Lethal is the, has the, you know, higher stock right now. So, and that's the second suicide dive, and again sends uh, Naito over. He's going to go for a third. Well, yeah. I mean, Lethal, I love you, but if you want to know how to do a suicide dive, you need to watch King Cuerno's matches. And there's oh, my God, one. yeah. And Jay Lethal. Really, Naito... I mean, he's gotten some offense, and don't get me wrong, but uh, and look at that! Oh, I thought Jay Lethal was gonna was gonna stuff uh, his uh, his partner there, but he did not. And to get on the apron and get that height advantage. That's what it's all about, brother. And you gotta wonder how Donovan Dijak will play into this matchup. I don't think he will. Well, he kind of did at the start, if you remember, distracting Naito and. Jay Lethal was able to kind of pummel him in the corner, and, and really ever since then, I mean, Naito's gotten, you know, maybe spurts of offense here and there, you know, explosions of a little bit of momentum, but Lethal has really been able to keep uh, Naito grounded and, and firmly in control of. Yeah. So. Donovan Dijak already paying dividends. Yeah, I guess so. We'll see if uh, Naito can make something happen here. Although, I mean, it is it is a Jay Lethal match, so we can fully expect everybody that came out to the ring with him to interfere at some point or another. Yeah, exactly. I'm just, you know, disappointed that Truth Martini and Silesia weren't a part of that group. Exactly. Like, I wanted to see my Truth Martini bump for the night. Yeah, he has to. He'll run out. Maybe uh, maybe they're avoiding all the, the extracurricular activity for the sake of kind of maintaining the Japan honor thing. Yeah. I don't know, maybe. I mean, Although, Japan... I guess if that was the case, Maria wouldn't have done what she did. Yeah, that's true. I mean, New Japan has been on a little bit of a winning streak here. They've done pretty well for themselves, which is why I'm kind of concerned about this match, because it's non-title. I think they have an out to give Naito the win. I just hope that isn't the case. Well, Nakamura won, and Kushida won, but the Addiction also won, and there the was... The Kingdom won. Match. Yeah, the Kingdom, they won. So it's two and two right now. Right. And the first match with Moose, that was a, uh, like a Like an match. interpromotional, yeah. yeah. Now you see uh, Naito regaining that vertical base after being grounded there, but Jay Lethal keep a control after that knee in the gut. But then Naito falls through their flying forearm. There's a back elbow. Switching gears here. Neck breaker. Yep, speeding oh. things up a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. This could be the opening Naito needed. I mean, it'd be a, quite a feather in the cap for Naito to beat the uh, the current and and very long reigning ROH World Television Champion. No way is that going to happen. Jay Lethal has audaciously come out here and said that the ROH World Television Title is the title. Thinks he has a more prestigious title than even Jay Briscoe in the ROH World Championship. I think he has an argument, considering. Ah, you know what? If it was any other company, I would say he had an argument, but Jay Briscoe, dude, just, he hasn't lost in how long? Exactly. Like, the guy who pins him is going to be a huge deal, whoever it is, whether it's an established oh, yeah. guy or what. It's, it's going to be crazy. Yep. Because what, he hasn't been pinned or submitted in over two years? Yep. What? How does that even happen? How does that happen? I don't know. Like, it's a big enough deal if it's one year, but two years? That's... Yeah. Jesus. Actually, it's probably going on three years at this point. Oh, my God. Because I feel like it was two years at this time last year. <laughs> and it's crazy, too, because when you, when you look at the, the, at the Briscoes, 
as characters and whatnot, you know, you wouldn't expect, you know, Jay Prisco to be on that kind of a streak where he's just like that invincible to pin or make submit. Um, and now Jay Lee. Oh, he's going for the lethal injection. Lethal injection. But Nido caught him. Are we going to see a dragon suplex? No. We're seeing standing switches here. Lethal, lethal combination. combination. Beautifully done. I love that. Lethal, the lethal moves, the combination and the injection are so beautiful. And there's the elbow drop. Yep. He does it better Two. than anyone else today. Oh, absolutely. And then you see Donovan Dijak shouting words of encouragement, it seemed like, to Jay Lethal. I still think he's going to have something up his sleeve to give Lethal the edge here. Yeah, I don't know. Turns Nido around, going to go for lethal combination again. Nido had it scouted this time. Sure did. Oh, but look at that spinning forearm there by Lethal, able to get it there on the rebound. And there's the Instaguri there by Naito. I hate how close this match is. I, I, yeah, it's making me very uncomfortable. But all oh, Lethal responds in kind. Oh, but now, oh, wow. That was like a wheelbarrow keg there. Holy crap. Wow. And you see it took Naito off his feet. I, I don't even know if he even knew what he was doing. It may have just been just like a quick reaction, a snap judgment to try and, you know, get everything leveled out. And yeah. it just happened to work. Oh, man, now both guys back up to their feet. There's a shot there by Jay Lethal. There's a shot there by Naito. This is going to be a back and forth affair. Who's going to get the better of it is the question. I'm hoping it's lethal. I really just don't get the appeal to Naito at all. Me either. I mean, I don't dislike him. I just don't get why he's so high up on the card. Right. Because, like, if there was a pyramid for New Japan, at the very tippy top would be Tanahashi, and then a notch below him would be AJ Styles, Okada, and Nakamura. But then, like, I feel like Naito is almost, like, in the notch below that with, like, Ibushi and Goto and Ishii and, like, that crop. Right. But I feel like he really, like, what has he done to get that high on the card? And look oh, Dijak again! again! Coming in again, and now Lethal's gonna... Wait, I think the match is being thrown out. I think Naito just... Or, no, no, I think Donovan Dijak, Dijak is getting thrown, thrown, thrown out. out. Yeah, but this still gives Lethal... A very a lot unique of time to recover for sure. Exactly. And I'll look at that oh, nice baseball slide, Naito. But I, I, that's that's ill advised there from Naito. I don't think he realizes who he's dealing with. Oh, no, but he catches he the shot nonetheless. Yeah, he does. Oh wow, that was just a straight punch to the face. That's yeah, Jay Lethal. Lethal I think it's, I think Jay Lethal is beyond caring. What's he gonna go for here? Oh, Naito slips out of it. Are you kidding me? And oh, there's a shot there. Oh, if Naito wins this match. Oh, man, Jay Lethal now on the top rope. Oh, Frankensteiner! Frankensteiner there by Naito. Cover, two, and oh, just kicked out to Jay Lethal, and Naito can't believe it. Oh, thank goodness. Stay in the fight, Lethal. Oh, man, now Naito has, has to stay on him. He's too busy worrying about uh, gesturing and posturing to the crowd. Now he's got him in a potential power bomb or pile driver position, but oh, lethal lands on his feet. Gonna oh, go lethal again. ejection. Oh, he caught him. Nice oh, German. German. Landed right on his Two. Head. Oh, wow, kick out. That was the second attempt at the lethal injection by Jay Lethal. He never hits it on the first try. Sometimes he hits it on the second try, but I feel like third time's the charm. Yeah, third time is going to be the charm, I feel like, for Jay Lethal. I don't know what Naito's thinking about here, but hopefully he doesn't connect. Moonsault, maybe? No. Oh, what the heck was that? That wasn't even a Phoenix Splash. That was weird. That was like a corkscrew moonsault-esque maneuver, but Naito coming hard on the leg. You see him favoring it. He even had the knee bandaged up in this match, and I'm only taking notice of now. Yeah. This could be Lethal's opportunity to hit I'm surprised the lead. Lethal hasn't taken more advantage of that. Oh, no, look at this schoolboy. One, on two... The 
Oh, no, he's still kicked out. Wow. Going for another one. Again. Trying to pin him again, oh. too. And now again he kicked out. Wheelbarrow. Oh, wheelbarrow. One, two. Oh, that was too close. Too close. Too close. Was that a wheelbarrow to a jackknife, John? There it is. Lethal injection. It's over. It's over. Cover. One, two, three count. Great match. Great finish, I should say. Match was okay. Nah, match was match was part of the course. I like the false finishes they did, though. Yeah, for sure. All those roll ups at the end with the jackknives and such. Yeah, I mean two cheaty roll ups and then lethal combination gets the W. Gotta love it. And I won't say completely clean, but definitely mostly clean. Yeah. Because there was almost like a reset after Dijak's interference. Yeah, I would completely agree. And Jay Lethal continues to roll on in dominance as the ROH World Television Champion. I'm telling you, it is an inevitability that Jay Lethal and Jay Briscoe cross paths in an ROH World Title match. I kind of want to see Jay Lethal versus Nakamura now, too. I think that'd be a great matchup. Because I know Nakamura doesn't technically have the Intercontinental Championship anymore, but he's kind of like the the face of the Intercontinental Championship in Japan. And Jay Lethal has found himself becoming the face of the TV title in ROH. Right. And I think it would be cool if the, those two, I guess you could call them secondary titles, that really could arguably be considered to be more prestigious than the the main title. I want those guys to face off. That would be awesome. And I love how the Lethal Injection has been built up. Yeah, I like as long as he goes for the cover right away, that's a three count, man. Absolutely. I feel like the, the lethal injection has even been protected better than the Beaumaye. Yeah. Because everyone kicks out of the Beaumaye nowadays. Right. It's like the freaking AA or something. It's like Isn't the high that? fly flow. No one ever gets pinned by just one. Right. <laughs> now you see Naito. I don't know, maybe admonishing Jay Lee. I don't know what he's saying to him there, but he extends his hand he's out. He's opening his eye like that. I do not get that. Is he, like, making fun of Jay Lethal because he's not Asian, because he's a round eye? <laughs> I don't know. It seems like he is. Extending his hand out, and Jay Lethal, is he going to shake it? Just shake it, Jay. Come on, man. He is a heel. I'd be shocked if he shook it. I wouldn't be. Uh, and see, there we go. How shocked are you, John? I'm I'm actually quite shocked. You're not expressing it very well. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know what to say, man. Jay Lethal, I mean, he did kind of cheat a little bit to win, but like you said, I'll use your term, mostly clean victory over Jay Lethal. And uh, Naito, pretty game effort, but at the end of the day, Jay Lethal's stock is just at an all-time high right now. I, I've, I've kept saying... Every event. I mean, he's bound to be number one contender for the ROH world title down the road. Oh, and here we go. Elgin Tanahashi. Well, oh, we know Hashi's winning this one. I can't believe I'm rooting for you, Elgin. <laughs> Everything about this match Hashi. is painful. I mean, I don't like Michael Elgin, and I don't really like Tanahashi, but at least we'd like. At least we know Tanahashi is dedicated to the business. Yeah. He's not getting ready to, you know, up and leave for freaking baseball like some jobber. <laughs> when is that even happening? Because I feel like we heard that months it ago. Might have even been a, it, it might have even been a work for all I care. Right. I just don't give a crap about my Elgin at all. And you've got my reaction exactly. What in Canada? <laughs> or as Scott Steiner in- would say, Mexico North. <laughs> he is from Canada for what it's worth. I wonder if uh, Hashi's going to come out in a Japanese flag. Oh, man. I, I don't Gigantic care. white cape with a big red dot in the middle. You know what? I, I, don't, I don't care what either of these guys do. As far as I'm concerned, they can both get in that Bullet rank. Club fan was just getting all up in Michael Elgin's face. That was awesome. I love it. But as far as I'm concerned, both of these guys could get in the ring, squat, and just fart for 20 minutes. And that would just be pretty much my enthusiasm level, seeing either of these guys compete. I'm sure the match will be good. See, that's my thing. Like, I feel like you're really underrating Tanahashi. You know, the thing is... You're I, just I guess, salty about him beating Okada, but he's a really, really good in-ring performer. Uh, I guess. 
He is. I'll, I'll concede, okay? The dude that innovated the sling blade that freaking everyone uses nowadays, even Finn Balor in, RO, or in NXT. Yeah, because, you know, it's a rule of thumb to always respect your elders. <laughs> He's not, like, 80 years old. He's not even old enough to be, like, over the hill. He's in his prime. Here he comes. 38 oh, that... years old, John. 38. He's not that old. With his little air guitar and everything. Oh, man. Uh, he's rocking a mullet and everything. Oh, well, well, apparently, from what you've been telling me recently, all Michael Elgin really needs to do to be Tanaji is get him in a schoolboy at one point. That'll be enough. Wait, what? You told me that he uh, Tanaji's been on losing streak. Oh, Toru Yano, yeah. Toru Yano, and he's been losing to schoolboys. Like, just roll-ups. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's Toru Yano. He's a tricky little son of a gun. <laughs> I mean, I've seen him make his trickster face and just, like, his shrugs. I don't know how you combat that, to be fair to Tanahashi for once. Yeah. It's it's pretty insane to combat. And, you know, what? in all sincerity, this will be a good matchup. I'm just not really, like, a big fan of either guy. But from in-ring, yeah, it, it'll be good enough. I think Tanahashi is... You... Well, I shouldn't say he's underrated in general because a lot of people recognize how great he is. I think you're underrating him just because you don't like him because he beat Okada in, in January. Yeah. Well, his pro debut came in 99. Wow. Well, Elgin's is in 2003. Four years after Tanahashi. Nakamura was in 02. But you know who's better than both these guys, Ashton? Adam Cole. Adam fucking Cole. You're damn right. <laughs> Just because ROH forgot about him doesn't mean I'm going to, damn it. <laughs> so let me ask you, Ashton. I mean, we're both thinking Tanahashi's running away with this thing, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no way this in hell. This is the match designed for New Japan to get a win back. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, Jay Lethal, we hope you enjoyed that victory because that was ROH's last. No, I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, we have Tanahashi coming out next. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, not just on Aji, but Elgin, too. Elgin isn't exactly on a winning streak. Yeah. Oh, he looks like such a sourpuss in turning heel. <laughs> I those... can't believe he shaved the mullet. Man, unbelievable. If we would have had matching hairstyles in this match. In the 21st century, two mullets could... in one match. How could you, Elgin? You can't even book our fantasies right. You can't even execute them right, Elgin. Unbelievable. I know, right? There's Tanahashi, though, with the forearm early. And, oh, my God, the air guitar. <laughs> oh, see, look, he's quick, though, man. He's quick. And drop to old. Yeah. Throws, throws Elgin, Elgin out. Phone. Get out of my ring, son. Oh, oh but gosh. Elgin not having it. <laughs> Elgin's like, screw you. I'm bigger than you. And here's how I prove it. Shoulder block. Get stuffed. He's actually an inch shorter. He's just, like, 40 pounds heavier. He's a snocky son of a gun. Yeah. Hard Irish whip there, but Tanahashi there able to get the back elbow to avert any more offense from Elgin for the moment. Launches himself. Elgin catches him. Dead get lift. No, no, no. Tanahashi escapes. Oh, there's the double legs out of the face. Springboard crossbody. Body. Very nice. Tanahashi Back to the again. electric guitar. <laughs> oh, God, does that way too much. I will say that was one thing that seemed to really annoy me about Tanahashi legitimately. Is I, th I think he just panders like way too much and does that gesture like way too much. But he's got control of the arm now of Elgin. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you're just looking for a reason to dislike him. I know, man. I'm, I'm telling you, like, I feel like he did it a lot in that Wrestle Kingdom 9 match against Okada. Like, I was like, he oh my god. He didn't do it, like, at all in the match itself. He waited until after the match was over. And then uh, was no, he actually did it at one point in the match. That's why he got back body dropped on the ramp. Oh, really? Remember, yeah, I think I even remember admonishing for that. Like, see, if you weren't stupid, that wouldn't have happened. You just oh, I don't even happen. remember that happening. we got to go back and watch Wrestle Kingdom 9 again. Yeah. yeah see Maybe there. we can listen to our own live reactions while we watch it. <laughs> I mean, you know, you do want to listen to the best commentary possible, so duh exactly. on that one. Well, I mean, I mean Matt Stryker and JR, though. No, that is true. Yeah, you know, I never did go back and actually watch the show to hear Jim Ross commentate, so I still Well, that's that. something that we need to go do then. After this match, after this pay-per-view's over... We have to watch PWG, Don't Sweat the Technique, and then we have to go back and watch Wrestle Kingdom 9 with that commentating, commentary. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> oh, man. Elgin's in for a it's long night. It's going to be weird to have a PWG show without UHA Nation on it. 
I know, right? Because he's in NXT, baby. Yeah. Debut leg drop. coming soon. Flip leg drop, that's right. Just a flipping leg drop, John. And that is one thing I've always given Elgin, is that a man for his size, some of the things he's able to do just really impress me. But, uh... I think the biggest problem I've had with him, other than the, uh, the alleged, um, non-compliance, I guess I could say, is the fact that his finisher is really dumb, in my opinion. What's his finisher again? I forgot Just a spinning powerbomb. Oh, right, right. He does a buckle bomb and then he picks the guy back up and does a spinning power bomb. Right. Like it's, like it's like I want so much more from someone with his kind of power. Exactly. We've seen so many power bombs before. Really? Someone just threw a streamer in the ring? What a scumbag. <laughs> you don't do that in the middle of a matchup, you jerk. Yeah, exactly. That's an illegal up. weapon. Look at Elgin acting like he just took out the trash. Well, I'm inclined to agree. He can't, uh, he can't sleep on Tanahashi. Yeah. You really can't. There's a nice knee to the small of the back there. There's a very, very small list of New Japan Pro Wrestling competitors that you can sleep on. Exactly. I think Naito's one of them. <laughs> yeah, somebody could just do that whole cocky corner rest kind of thing. Or it's like, what's up? And, you know, Naito wouldn't do anything. He doesn't... <laughs> It's a lost cause. <laughs> and then that one fangirl sheds a single tear. Not too much, though. Not yeah. too much. Just, just that single tear. Yeah, just, just the single Indian tear. <laughs> oh, man, look at Elgin. Oh, up. Oh! oh, and uh, she moves out of I don't think he ever hits that. Yeah, you thought you were badass, didn't you, Elgin, with your little gun motion? I know. What do you think you are, a part of the Bullet Club? Gosh. Yeah, I don't remember anybody saying, throw that guy a shirt, you jerkwad. <laughs> Anyway, it was Tanahashi, but on that Tanahashi got scouted, and then, oh, what a yeah, kick yeah. there by Elgin. Kick to the gut. Deadlift German? No? Oh, no, Tanahashi. Oh? No, the elbows. Oh, Northern Lights! Beautiful Northern Lights suplex. Spole I actually lights remembered hooked. the name of a suplex, John. I'm so proud of you. That's becoming a thing for me. Every time a suplex happens, I forget what to call it. Elgin now seems to be getting frustrated. He can't put Tanahashi away. Of course, if he watched Wrestle Kingdom 9, he should know that this is nothing new whatsoever. Uh, not just Wrestle Kingdom 9. Literally any New Japan show that Tanahashi's on. <laughs> yeah, really, just or, Tanahashi's career. Unless you count the last, like, month and a half that he's been jobbing to Toriano. <laughs> that still makes me smile. It's so funny, too, because, like, Toriano will just, like, catch him in a small package and get the three count, and then Tanahashi will pop up like, oh my god, I lost, how do I handle this? <laughs> and then Toriano shrugs. And That's then exactly does... right, yes. <laughs> exactly. And then He's he like, goes... I don't know, man, but I just did that. I'm leaving now, bye. I'm gonna go sell a DVD. And then he goes to the back, and whatever he does when he gets there, I don't even want to begin to pontificate. Um, probably he tries to, you know, shill more merch. Probably. That's kind of Toriano's thing. Yeah, Toriano's got to eat. <laughs> selling those DVDs. Now Elgin's got Tanahashi in the corner there. And, oh, drop kick. And now Tanahashi, I think, is really picking up the speed here. Yeah, picking up the speed and the steam. Oh, man. Oh, I thought he was actually going to go for Sling Blade there, to be honest. I was waiting oh, for Oh, yeah, it almost did kind of feel like he was going to go for that, too. A flying forearm instead. Yep. Elgin's staggering here. He's back up to one knee. Oh, now he gets up. Oh, top rope. What's he going High fly for flow? here? Oh, senton. Yeah, beautiful. And Elgin kicks out. Japanese ref yeah. looking all serious. Like, yep, yeah, only two. Yeah, Get not really work. that big of a surprise there. Yeah. They call him unbreakable for a reason. That's something I have noticed, though, is that he hasn't been really, like, kind of stiffen uh, Tanahashi like he normally does. Right. Like that. <laughs> that was staggering there. That calls line. Oh, oh, look at that. The sludge kind of kind of insecurity. Wow. And then, oh, now I think he's going to hit the deadlift German. Deadlift German for sure. Oh, yeah. he's got the hands firmly clasped around the waist. 
And Tana, she's flailing. He's flailing, but there it is. Beautiful, yeah. Not as good as the flails that Kevin Owens did, though, when Neville suplexed him. Oh, my God, that was beautiful. When he realized his feet were leaving the cabin. No, 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 no. He went full Cleveland. Yep. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was so good. Uh, oh, man. Oh, it looks like Elgin wants his finisher here. He's going for a buckle bomb, it looks like. Yeah, how does it feel to one thing, is Elgin? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dragon Screw! Dragon Screw, the beginning of the end. Yeah, when Tanahashi starts whipping out the Dragon Screws, that's when you know he means business. Oh, uh, now he's going to oh, he's gonna go for a high flat low? No, he can't. And although he could do it to a standing opponent, he did that to Okada. Wouldn't that just be a cross body, then? Yeah. He did it! Uh, I there... Oh, but Elgin caught him! Look at him pulling a Cena. Literally, uh, the exact uh, same thing. Oh, wow, yeah. That's look. Valley Driver 2 now. <laughs> oh, discus elbow to the back of the head. Wow. This oh, elbow to the forearm. face. Jesus. Two. And oh, John Aji kicks out. <laughs> Elgin Very thought, impressive. Elgin thought that was enough offense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. That's funny. Uh, you dumb bastard. He's going to hit his finisher and it still won't be enough. <laughs> There's no hope. It is a pretty dumb finisher, but still. Come on, Hashi, get up. You know why? Why is Elgin giving angry face to that section of the audience? I, I suggest you know you stay on your opponent. Oh and... please, John. He knows he's not winning. He just wants to get the most out of this loss. <laughs> it looks like he's kind of going for a pile driver, actually. But I don't know. Of course, so Tanahashi able to fight out of it. Of course, you say. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like they're going to have somebody have their head piled right on the ring apron. Good God. <sighs> um, That's how Michael Bennett broke B.J. Whitner's neck, for what it's worth. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Steve Carino probably marked out. Uh, I mean, I think he's said since then that he's glad it happened. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think King Carino may be my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What the oh, hell that even was, was like that? Drag, that was like a dragon screw leg whip to the neck instead. I think that was like a fraud face neck breaker, because I've seen moves like that, but Elgin just cast out. Yeah. It's like he started to go along with the move, and he's like, ah, you're the legend here. Fuck it. You do the rest. Yeah, I'm just going to fall from here on out. You can take it. I'm gonna be thinking, oh, he's going to go for another high fly flow from the top. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that position doesn't look entirely. Okay, there we go. And there it is. There it is. He actually hit this one. It didn't get caught. Beautiful. I love that he can hit that, though, on a standing opponent. Yeah. Because it's like a frog splash crossbody, but it's still, like, it's the high fly flow, man. Right. Like Ambrose's elbow drop to the standing opponent. It's so Yeah. Cool. I feel like there needs to be more top rope offense able to be done to standing opponents that isn't just suicide dives. Yeah, I can agree with that, definitely. Never forget that one time when John Cena jumped off the top rope and literally just killed everybody in the vicinity. Yeah. <laughs> even the primetime players weren't even getting hit, but they still fell over. <laughs> oh, uh, nope. John Audrey leaves it over. Elgin's still trying, and it's not nice. enough. <laughs> Listen to you. You're just so jaded about this match. <laughs> You're just so cynical right now. It's hilarious. It's just a foregone conclusion, man. I, like you said, even Elgin knows it. Like, Yeah. That doesn't like make the came match out. The worst, though. I think the match is still good. No, I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun with this match. It's just, you know, like you and I said. Michael Elgin start. nipple slap. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Internet just exploded. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Oh, yeah. Elgin completely no sold it. Wow. Oh man, they're they're doing that spot where they're both trying to regain a vertical base, but while hitting each other. Yeah, and it looks and like Elgin got his first. Not that Elgin got Elgin got his first, but Tanahashi. I, I can expect Tanahashi coming out with a flurry of offense any second now, honestly. I don't know, dude. I think Elgin's oh. gonna get the flurry of offense, and then Tanahashi's gonna reverse it and 
Come oh, back. what a slap! Yeah, he, you could actually see the steam. Oh, wow, he went for a sling blade, and Elgin just no soul the crap out of it. <laughs> just like that neck break on the outside, I'm telling you, not a single shit has Michael Elgin given right now. He really doesn't at all. <laughs> He's not cooperating nearly as much as he should be. It's kind of a combination of hilarious and scary at the same time. <laughs> but Elgin, I thought you said I could get my shit in. <laughs> I lied. If you're beating me, you're beating me cheap. <laughs> that was a great Elgin impersonation. He's once a lariat, apparently. Oh, uh, he ain't getting it. Dragon suplex, finally? Or or maybe maybe have what Nelson suplex? No. Hell? No, I think it's going to be a German here. <laughs> Look at Elgin's face. I know. That's what I said that about. Like, what the heck? He seemed nice. legitimately traumatized. Yeah, like, somebody's trying to take my body away from me. <laughs> my body's not... High fly flow! Body. We're getting a high fly flow to the back! Oh, man, this will be the third one in this match. The second one, I yeah, think... Yeah, but the first one executed. didn't hit. The first one yeah. didn't caught the first one. And there it is. This is going to be... He's oh, no, no, not... Right away. He never goes for just one. I, I will say, that does make Tanahashi smart. Better that than a baby faces things. Did I get the win? Uh, no, retard. Try hitting it again. Oh! <laughs> Oh, are you sure about that, John? <laughs> uh, not so much anymore, no. <laughs> I really do like that Tanahashi does that, though, because it's like we've seen frog splashes and people have kicked out of frog splashes, but two frog splashes? The only time I ever saw Eddie Guerrero do that was against The Undertaker, so respect, because he just yeah. knew how legit The Undertaker was. <laughs> it's like one is not going to be enough. <laughs> Yeah, this guy's a freak. Oh, now Elgin. Now he's calling for that power bomb, that famed power bomb, Ashton. There's the buckle bomb. Can he follow up? Oh, no! Sling, Sling blade. blade! Beating you cheap my ass. I know, right? Yeah, I'm getting my shit in, damn it. <laughs> Elgin almost my flow. Like, Elgin almost Elgin's like, like, no, please don't. Please, no. <laughs> oh man, I, mean, I can't kick out of this. There it is. And Elgin taught us all a very important lesson, that some failures really are inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, if you know you're going to fail, when all else fails, sandbag. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Two different times in that match, one of which, one of the times that he sandbagged actually ended up pushing the finish back because they were getting ready to do the finish. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh. Sling blade. That's such a. <laughs> I think Prince Puma does it best. Definitely. Though Finn Balor has a gorgeous sling blade, though. Yeah, he does. Good job from these guys. You know, I, I know I can be especially hard on Tanahashi and, and Elgin. I really just really don't care for his performance. Like, he's good, but there's not... I like need to, like, come up with a playlist of every Tanahashi match that he's lost in the last, like, two weeks. Best Christmas ever. <laughs> or two months, even, because he's been on quite a losing streak against Toriyano. He'll figure it out. He'll put the pieces together. Toru, it's the thing where, like, he's better than everyone, but Toriyano just has his number for some reason. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious, really. <laughs> What's next, John? What's our next match? I, I don't know. I but think I we're about to get a graphic. I, I guarantee you won't give me nearly as many laughs as that match just <laughs> did. <laughs> <laughs> I loved your closing line. <laughs> if, if you know you're going to fail, and you have to fail, sandbag. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Only on Twitter. Well, oh, I think our next match is going to be ROH All Stars versus Best in New Japan. Oh, they're advertising for Best in the World in June. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Live on pay per view. Not eye pay per view, actual pay per view. That should be much better than this. Yeah, definitely. Mr. ROH, Roddy Strong, baby. Oh, man. Yep, this is, I believe this is the, the, the Ten Man. Oh, this is going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be him, War Machine, and the Briscoes against 
I don't even remember who the five reps are for for uh, New Japan, but it's going to be interesting for sure. The Messiah of the Backbreaker. Absolutely. I feel like the Young Bucks and AJ Styles are going to be on the opposite side. Right. But I don't remember who the other two are. Maybe it's just the Bullet Club and it'll be Anderson and Gallows. Maybe, yeah. That might be what it is. It might be, yeah, I think it will be ROH All-Stars versus Bullet Club. That makes sense. There is War Machine, Hanson, and Rowe. I've seen Hanson, and Hanson is just a, a very impressive big man. Hanson is everything that Michael Elgin was, except way cooler. Exactly. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going against the Bullet Club. He literally just said bulletproof. Ah, uh, okay. That just makes sense at this point. Nice, nice message to send by War Machine. You know, yeah. confidence is certainly there. Oh, they're so synchronized. I'm so happy about this. <laughs> Symmetry gets me going, man. <laughs> their beards aren't very symmetrical, but their entrance is. Reach for the sky, boy! Oh, man. The Briscoes. I love Mark's frog splash elbow drop. Yeah. It's so good. And that redneck kung fu. Oh, definitely. The crazy thing, too, is that this match involves both world champions. Jay Briscoe yeah, and man. AJ Styles are the champions for, for their representative brands. I'm sorry, man, but my heart's going with AJ on this one. Oh, for sure. Gotta support that. We're completely club, 500, though. It's been down the middle. Everyone, every match, uh, I guess... We've had just as many ROH winners as we have New Japan winners, so this is going to break the tie. Right. I like that, though, because, like, for those of us that keep tra keep track of that kind of stuff, that kind of makes this match mean even more. Right, yeah, definitely. I hope Roddy gets the pin. If, if, if ROH wins, I hope that Roderick Strong is the one that, that's the one that getting the pinfall, although it'll probably be Jay. Yeah. Bullet Club, Bullet baby. Bullet Club, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, such good music, too. Freaking love Bullet Club. Everyone does, John. Everyone does. <laughs> Do you want to know who doesn't like Bullet Club? Who? People who only hate popular things because they're popular. Ah. That's it. Most people suck. And, <laughs> contrari and contrarians. Yeah. But those two people are in very similar classifications. The Young Bucks, AJ Styles. Oh, that's Tamatanga and Bad Luck Fale. Oh, man. Oh, no, that is Gallows. Never mind. That's I love... Fale. Are those masks or is that face paint? That's face paint, brother. Oh, my God. I love it. I freaking yeah. love it. Yeah, they're awesome. I thought that, that was Tamatanga and Bad Luck Fale, but no, it looks like it is... Oh, no, that is a mask. That's even cooler. He does have some face paint on, but he's also got a mask on that blends into it. That's insane. That's awesome. I mean, uh, you know, I've said it time and time again, and I, I just get the biggest smile on my face every time I see the Bullet Club together. AJ Styles being in this spot. Dude, look at the streamer action right now. <laughs> they blew their load second time tonight. The first time was Nakamura. Then the Bullet Club. That I says think the Bullet everything. Club got more streamers than Nakamura. That's a freaking rarity right there. That's crazy. Dude, this match is going to be so good. Folks, if I was ever to kind of have an image of what Tag Team Warfare actually looks like, this would be pretty close to it, I gotta say. Is this an elimination match? It almost has to be, doesn't it? Oh my god, if it is, we may be here a while. I know. Well, I mean, yeah, we we should have a good like half hour left almost. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, this is the main event, isn't it? I mean, this it, is the yeah, main it event. is. This is the main event. Yeah. Oh my god. Who's gonna emerge from We've this? We've got AJ board? Styles' chance. So happy for him. I He's wonder why Fale and Tamatanga never compete for these ROH New Japan shows. That's a good question. Dude, Bullet Club really is on top of the world right now. They are pro wrestling to me. I mean, you know, it's just it's it's crazy the the Bullet Club movement, the fans, 
the Bullet Club has gotten and everything, like, they are the faction right now in pro wrestling. They are amazing. It's like a freaking uh, an otherworldly entity. For, yeah. Like, just their presence at this point. And it's oh, not even just it? like, it's not even just like, oh my god, it's the Young Bucks. No, when they're all together, that's when it, that's when it makes it a big deal. Look at Carl Anderson. He's so good, dude. He might be the most underrated wrestler in the world right now. Carl Anderson with that machine gun telling you, take your code of honor and shove it. I love it. And then he freaking love it. Afterwards, too. He pointed the gun at him and he mowed them all down. And now we're going to try this again, but I just see a huge breakdown coming. Oh! oh a team wide suck it chop! I love it! Oh my god! Bullet, bullet, bullet Club for life! Yeah! The Briscoes are going against the Young Bucks. Oh my god! Mark just got flipped over the turnbuckle. And in a blink of an eye, this match is already broken down. Absolutely. The ref's gonna have to be real liberal with this one. <laughs> oh <Yes>. my- <laughs> Oh my god, Matt Jackson with the grounded suck it. <laughs> that's... Oh no, that's Nick, I think. No, that yeah, that's Nick. Yeah, Nick, the dark haired one is Matt, right? Yeah, well it looked like he had dark hair, but yeah. I mean the the most telling feature is that Matt has the ridiculous sideburns. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Roderick Strong now in the corner. If we can try and get some order in this matchup. Nick it's Jackson funny because I was starting to feel kind of empty having gone through an entire ROH New Japan show without a Young Bucks match, but now this is happening, so I feel whole again. Hooray! <laughs> Just tag to Matt now, and here's the first Young Bucks double team, and here we go, double arm drag. And drop oh, look at that. Oh, wow, drop kicks. Beautiful. I think they could fit more super kicks into their routine if they would turn those drop kicks into super kicks. You know, and this is once again where I have to shake my head and laugh at TNA, because when the Young Bucks came as Generation Me, I don't think TNA realized what they had. They didn't and- get it. That's what it really is. They just did not get what the Young Bucks were about. Right. And I'll, 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 But look at that. The Bullet Club looking out for their own, and I love it because Matt Jackson was in and a bad way. And guess what? Oh, wow. Our own looks out for their own, too. Oh, that's crazy. Um, we've got AJ and Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe with the double drop kick, but it looked like it missed, actually. Oh, and then- oh AJ takes out everyone, though. AJ freaking Styles. AJ Styles pulling a freaking shield move and sacrificing his body for the greater good of the group. Yeah, buddy. Oh, here comes Nick Jackson. Nick Jackson's going to destroy people right now. Oh, my God. Jesus. Meanwhile, Matt's just like, yep, we just did that. What are you going to do about it? (laughs) Yeah, young bucks are untouchable. Oh, oh, well, I have to say that. Yeah, Jay Briscoe disagrees. This match basically feels like a three-on-five match. It's like Jay Briscoe, Hanson, and Roderick Strong versus the Bullet Club. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong. I like Roe, and I love Mark Briscoe, but they are just not on that level. No. And to prove it, they Mark Briscoe just ate a double super kick from the Young Bucks. He sure did. <laughs> but I think Jay Briscoe counts for two. Yeah. So really, it's like five-on-four. <laughs> one thing we could say with absolute certainty jay briscoe he ain't eating that pin <laughs> yeah yeah definitely oh man oh wow dude they're so good carl anderson like yeah. i said i genuinely think he might be the most underrated wrestler in the world right now so good he really is it's weird because he, like, from what I understand, he's never done anything prominent in the U.S. That like, is surprising. Yeah, it's like he just kind of skipped the indie scene and went straight to Japan. <laughs> right. I think he might have even trained as a young boy in Japan, and that's kind of how he got his start. Well, dude, like, you hear about the Japanese culture and how wrestling is treated there. I don't, and I think you're seeing more wrestlers, like, even today say, yeah, like, it's my dream to work in Japan. I know even MVP said... You know, I loved working in WWE, but my dream was Japan. Japan, I think, for so many guys, whether you're a startup or a veteran, is kind of the place to be at one point or another in your career. Yep. yep. And Carl Anderson just wanted to bypass all that and get right to it, and, you know, it's worked out for him pretty well. Yep. 
And now AJ Styles in the ring, baby. Yeah, eat that backbreaker, Roddy. <laughs> Messiah my ass. Oh, my God. I'm just happy to see AJ Styles happy. Man, I used to be like an AJ Styles freaking mark when they just let him be him and not yeah. screw him up in TNA. Yeah. And just to see him be this badass feels so good. Oh, the back rake from Matt Jackson. And the Ric Flair strut. And the, and the suck, suck it. it. <laughs> He's too good. This is Bullet Club's world and everyone else. You're just privileged to live in it. The assisted sliced bread. And then the knee. Holy shit. The Young Bucks, dude. The Young Bucks. I feel like Vanna White just showing everyone. Listen up, people. Here are the Young Bucks. <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> And maybe wear your brown pants because you're about to shit yourselves. I know, right? Oh! Oh, Roddy! Oh, oh Roddy! Roddy oh, my God! Backbreaker. Oh. Good God! One backbreaker! And then oh, a belly my to belly God! There. He's so good! I love Roderick Strong so much. Uh. Comes Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe and Matt Jackson. Oh, right! That Kung Fu all the way! Oh, there's another chop. I love the sound effects. Yeah, da, da! <laughs> <laughs> Suck it! Suck it! Suck it! Suck it! Suck it! Oh, well, come on, man. You got a lot more than that. Oh, God. <laughs> He's in the crane stance. Oh, oh. there's the boot. <laughs> Of Mark, Briscoe. Mark Briscoe is feeling it right now. He's so good. <laughs> now Carl Anderson is going to try and put a stop to it. Good luck with that. Mark Briscoe, there, and there's the tag to Jack That Briscoe. was brilliant. The blind tag. That's something I would expect from the Bullet Club, but the opposition pulled it off here. Oh, and now here Nick Jackson the says tag. Nice crossbody. Oh, man, now Nick Jackson feeling it, but he's in there with Jay Briscoe. I feel a bit uneasy. Super kick gets stuffed, and there oh, are the jabs taps. now. Holy crap. Jesus, Jay, really? We got, we've a little excessive. We saw more punches there than in Mayweather Pacquiao, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I think, what the heck is on Matt or Nick Jackson's back? I, I think, like, a piece of... Streamer. Streamer, yeah. Oh, there it fell off. Yep, you were right. Oh, Nick Jackson there. Trying to step. Oh, my oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> In comes Hanson. Oh, oh my the God. Bronco Buster. Oh, that, that didn't taste good. That's some kind of Buster, that's for sure. Oh, my God. I love how Roe was just like, screw your pace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> screw your flippy shit. I feel like Roe just wants to wear a t-shirt like, get the tag, wreck your shit. <laughs> Arrive, destroy. <laughs> oh my God! Are you serious? He just did two backbreakers and a power bomb without. It was like a go. backbreaker, gut buster, power bomb. Yeah. In that order. <laughs> yeah. And then oh, and the like, headbutt to Nick Jackson. And I love how Ro just stands on the apron, like, yeah, that was a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he just wanted to take a break now. <laughs> I mean, when you've got Jay Briscoe on your team, I would want to break him too. I mean, just, it's like, you know how normally when there's a tag team, it's back and forth between the two people. And then like, if there's five people, you would think everyone got equal shares, right? Right. But when Jay Briscoe's on your team, you tag him in no matter what. I feel like. like I don't care who he tags in, whoever it is, they tag him back in. I feel like given Jay Briscoe's op if he was to eat a Styles Clash, uh, a Meltzer Driver, just all the finishes that the Bullet Club can nail, like all of his partners would shrug on the apron. They're like, yeah, it'll be a near fall. And then it would be a near fall. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think that, that what would happen is that all that stuff would happen and then he would roll out under the ropes. And yeah. someone else would eat the pin. <laughs> Because that's, like, he's been lucking into, like, all of his wins. Like, even at the last show that we watched, where the, the main event was a fatal four-way with, like, him, Champa, Hanson, and Elgin, I think it was, he literally only won because he got super kicked and he fell on top of somebody who got hit with a finisher more recently. 
Yeah, I feel like he fell on top of Champa and he pinned Champa. I think it yeah. was and hit the kick. Yeah. And you and I were pissed because we thought Champa was in for this big push and he eats the pin. Yeah. Because that was intelligent, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. And now Nick breaks out. And now Champa's not even on this card. Oh, that that's sad. Yeah. Roderick. Oh wow! Well, no, you do not mock AJ Styles. He just that will, did. That will not go unanswered. If anyone on this team is allowed to mock anyone on the Bullet Club, it's Roderick Strong. <laughs> He's earned it. <laughs> oh Jesus, that back elbow, dude! Hanson is gonna just. Oh my God! Oh, that oh, super he... kick! He didn't even fall over. Here comes AJ. Up, AJ, this is how over it's now. Done. Yeah. God, that air. Oh, but... Ro. Oh, yeah, good luck with that. Ro. Oh, oh, my God. God. Yeah, Roddy. Suck it. <laughs> Holy crap. Piece of Dude, crap. Dude, AJ. Wow. AJ. He's taking everyone out by himself. AJ. He wants a clash already? <laughs> AJ fucking Styles. Apparently. Here comes Anderson, baby. I mean, Gallows. I Man, to... I'm happy for Gallows, too. Why did I almost call him Doc Anderson? That's so weird. <laughs> oh, oh, another cartwheel. Are you serious with Hanson's athleticism? Oh, God, he's feeling it. That's dangerous. Warbeard Hanson. Oh, but Gallows with the semi-super kick. Here comes Carl Anderson, and oh, Matt Jackson also got in there. Yeah. Oh, the, oh nice kick to the temple there. And now Matt Jackson with the suckets. <laughs> <laughs> I love Matt Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> They're all teaming up. So is this an elimination match? Are they going to eliminate Hanson here? No, I think it's one fall to the finish at this point. Quintuple super kick! Oh my goodness, Shocky Cali Moo Moo. Oh, <laughs> no, I guess it's not, a, it's not an elimination. Yeah, it is one fall to the finish here. Oh, man. This totally should have been an elimination, though. <laughs> oh, definitely. This should have gone for like, this should have gone for like an hour and just yeah. been an elimination match. Yep. Oh my god, everything is happening right now. Damn right it is. Oh my god, everything. Everything, John. Triple moon salt! Oh, triple moon salt! This match is wacky crackers. Oh my god. Anderson and Gallo setting up Hansen. More bang for your buck, almost. Oh, uh, there it is. 50. It's done, son. It's over. AJ's going to do spiral tap. Oh, no, he did a 450, Four, too. 450. Oh, Four, Matt Jackson now. Another 450. Jeez. It's done. Will Two. you guys do some blocking, please? Wow. He kicked out? Oh, my what? God. Hands are totally OP. Even Matt Jackson's like, what the hell? Yeah. 99 Hanson. Oh, crap. Oh, Ro came in. He helped him. Oh, I like him. Bro. He's freaking good, man. Yeah, War Machine I could get behind. Not as much. How have they not won the tag titles yet? I think they will in due time. How have they not won anything yet, championship-wise? I, I, I don't like, I could know. see them as IWGP World Heavyweight champ Tag Team Champions, too. Not just ROH Tag Team Champions. Right. Man, this match. Just because they don't fit the physical profile for New Japan, but I mean, freaking Vader was huge in New Japan, so I don't know. Yeah, really. That's kind of the style that they wrestle, too. Oh, no, he kicks him off. AJ here, springboard. Of a oh, oh, Hanson six. destroyed him. Oh, God. I hope Good. AJ's okay there. Oh, is Hanson going to come off the top turnbuckle? Oh, please, dear Are God. Are you no. kidding me right now? Oh, my it's God. Freaking Senton. Oh my god! And he completely no sold it too. He's up and taunting the crowd. Who the hell else is left? And nothing. Just Hanson and Anderson, it looks like. I keep saying Anderson. Gallows, dang it. Oh god, he grabbed poor Matt Jackson. <laughs> oh god. I think Matt can handle himself. Indie taker, baby. Oh, God, but there comes Roderick Strong. Oh, the, oh, the knee to the face. Oh, there's and now AJ. Another knee to the face. And, yeah, that actually was Anderson, not Gallows. AJ, you, you, you've got to do something here. You can't let Roderick Strong get the win. I will not let that douchebag get the win after mocking you earlier. Why would you call him a douchebag? It's Roderick Strong, dude. He mocked AJ's another taunt. face. 
Oh, is he wow. going to superplex in AJ too? Oh, For my God's God. sake. Give the a break. Everybody's like in third gear right now. Oh, what? God. Superplexes for everybody. Oh, oh God. God. I'm gonna do it Literally, to... superplexes for everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, normally when somebody hits a superplex, they even sell it, but not Roderick Strong. He's built an immunity to his own superplexes. <laughs> oh, it's like... It's no, like... not reversing uh, it. That's it. Three needs the face followed up by super he's doing one for every corner this oh is god is he gonna get anders or a gallows too i did it again dang it uh, he, he's gonna get gallows yeah Dude. one for every corner yeah roddy strong he hasn't hit one in the far right corner his endurance is unbelievable how can you do oh wait oh there's nick oh man oh look at that shot <laughs> And he, Ronnie's like, I'm getting that damn fourth superplex. <laughs> that's it. He does want it, but I don't think he's going to get it. If you're going to save Gallows, then I guess you want to do it. Oh, is he going to do it into the crowd? He is. He's going to. Please. Go no. They already all died once. Don't do it again. Yeah. Just as we were building a little momentum back and everyone's dead. <laughs> Although it looks like Matt Jackson or not Matt Jackson, Mark Briscoe didn't really get hit that much. Yeah, you know, Mark Briscoe somehow survived. It's like, finally, I could be the shining Briscoe for once. I, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, and you know Jay's still going to be fine. Like, he's basically one of the people that's going to get up right away. Well, Luke Gallows seems to be fine, too. And uh, Hanson. And Hanson. Oh, speaking of, oh, but Gallows caught it. Oh, beautiful. Oh, uh, Baldo Bomb. Baldo Bomb by Gallows. Oh, but now Ro. Bro, oh. what the hell? Oh, and he slams him down. What? Oh! Cutter there by Carl Anderson. And the brain buster from AJ. Beautiful. And now AJ. He's got Ro. Yeah, Ro's not getting out of this. Styles oh, clash. Styles clash. He doesn't no. need to. Roddy's going to get him out of it for him. Sick kick to AJ's face. Oh, my God. Oh, Mark God. Briscoe just hit. It looked like Carl Anderson on the outside, or was it Luke Gallows? Oh, man, I, I, think, I think it was Luke Gallows, but, oh, Roderick Strong taking on everybody. Mark, Jay, I can't keep track. Oh, oh Jesus. Matt Jackson is dead. Jay Driller. Oh, Jay Driller coming up, and there it is. Oh, that's it. It's over. Oh, why? Mark with the f frog splash elbow drop. Oh, no way. Mark's going to get the winning pin. What? Three count. Wow. Holy crap. Oh, my God. That match was insane. Damn. Really wanted so, Bullet Is that Club match get getting added to your short list, John? Or was it no or not? You know what? I, it's tough, man. I, I think it just missed the mark for me a little bit, but it was chaotic. Just because sure. it was all chaos and no story. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, <laughs> like, for just a pure resume, that was fun as hell. Yeah. Like, oh, man. I'll it's tell you what, Argo though. Argo H beats Team Bullet Club. I gotta be honest. Roderick Strong, MVP. I feel like Oh, for sure. Difference. Yeah, he made all Those the Those superplexes, though. Those superplexes, and then that sick kick towards the end is what really turned the tide. And team killed Harley. AJ Styles, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then that power that, bomb. Yeah. From power that that triple combination from Roe was so awesome. That was kind of the point that won me over. Oh man, and then you see the coverage there, everybody on all sides, and Mark Briscoe actually got the winning pin on Matt Jackson. Mm-hmm. Whew, man. That was an amazing show, though. From beginning to end, there were no real lulls. Even the match that you thought was going to be a lull, the Tanahashi Elgin match, was pretty freaking good. Yeah. Oh, champions face off. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Please don't let Jay Briscoe have the IWGP World Championship. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh wow. Jay, Jay Lethal. Lethal, yes! Oh, my God. He's taking everyone out until he gets his title shot. Oh, my, finally. This is how you should be using Jay Lethal. Yes. Oh. 
let him be the one to end Jay Briscoe's streak, please. Wow. 30 years old, been in the business for a freaking decade. TDV champion for over a year. Oh, look at that, dude. I think this ending just bumped the pay-per-view up a whole nother notch for me. Yeah, like from like an eight and a half to nine and a half. Yeah, it's funny because you were saying eight and a half to nine. I was going to like say like eight out of ten to nine out of ten for me. Yeah, definitely. That uh, ending. Whoo-wee. I would agree with you. Like a nine out of ten for sure. Yeah, I did not think they'd give Jay that kind of a rub to finish. Oh, that is God. awesome. That is amazing. You know what? I got a little miffed at ROH a little while back with their finish in that Fatal 4 we were talking about when Champa was seemed to be getting a push. You know, he ate the pen. But they really did right here by another guy who was on a hot streak in Jay Lethal. That was great. Oh, my gosh. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's going to that's gonna be it for us since the, the pay-per-view is now over. But I hope you enjoyed. I know we did. This show was amazing. Well worth the money. Search us, give it, buy it. Go out and buy it. Find it if you can. Uh, it's well worth the money. Such an amazing show. And I can shockingly say that for all the stars that emerged with that ending, this night belonged to Jay Lethal, the only champion left standing. Yep. Wow. It's Naito and then finishes everyone off at the end. Except beautiful. Love what the future of Jay Lethal is looking like. If you're a Jay Lethal fan, you got to be grinning from ear to ear. Guys, this has been our live reactions. What an incredible show. Yeah, Absolutely. We will see you tomorrow night, if not Sunday morning, for preview and predictions. And Sunday night, if not Monday morning, for live reactions to payback. Gonna be awesome. All right, see you then, guys.